Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. <laughs> the ultimate Cleveland Sports Show starts now. Booyah! Hey, welcome everybody to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on a Thursday. Tyvis and Jason with me today. We've got Mikey McNuggets, Anthony, Steve, and Earl all behind the glass. And a lot to get to today. Later in the show, we'll get to the, the Guardians with another come-from-behind win. We'll get to the Cavaliers and how awful they are, even in victory. So a lot to get to today. O.J. Simpson died, though. He's not with us today. He's dead. He's out. Yeah. It's weird. Juice is gone, man. When juice somebody dies that, like, you're like, eh, good riddance. Yeah. I like Juice. I like Juice on Twitter. He was a good follow on Twitter. <laughs> he has some good stories. And yeah. You know, he did. He tried to do some really good things. And, you know, when Jim Brown passed, he shared some good information there. So, Juice, Juice was... You're was okay a, with him on Twitter. Oh, yeah. But ultimately, he probably killed two people. And well, I guess we'll, we'll never, never know. We'll, we don't know that. We'll never know for sure. I think we no, all... I think we know. I think we know. But you'll never know with 100% certainty. If the glove don't fit, you must have quit. It's hard to believe that, like, Tyvis and Anthony and Mike, they weren't even alive for that. That's wild. Right? You watched some highlights. What year was the o- was OJ? 94. Yeah, okay. I, was just, I was just I was born, born that year, actually. Yeah, I was born. Yeah, okay, so you guys were, like, just born. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Was it 94? Yeah, it was 94. 94? I was a senior years. in high school. For the chase? Yeah, I was a senior in high school for the chase. Man, that was crazy. But he was, I seen some highlights. He was good, man. Oh, he was he, a great football he player. He was great on and that the, field. The verdict came back. Yeah. I was at a luncheon or a brunch it was yeah. the morning of game one of the indians red sox playoff that's right in 95 and they, <laughs> yeah and, and there was a guy in the everybody back was the watching it or well we were it. yeah there was yeah. a guy with like one of those little mini radios up to his ear and he was saying not guilty not guilty the entire room went oh my god yeah and, and uh i i remember i was working i this i had dropped out of college and before i went i went back in 96 and i was working at this oil company i was just like a gopher i would mm-hmm. run errands and stuff and when they announced the, the verdict was going to happen, they put on this, like, little TV in, this, in the office, and every single person yep. in the office. Yep. I mean, it was – now you can't even imagine the story because nowadays there's so many TV outlets right. and people go from thing to thing yep. to thing so quick. Yep. But that was, I feel like, the biggest story of – Oh, of for, the for, decade. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even more than a decade. Yeah, I mean, that was – that was one of those where were you moments, right? Right. Like Until nine eleven, for that our was parents, the biggest story. Yeah, yeah. For our parents, it was the Kennedy, the Kennedy assassination. Right. Where right. Right. When, right. For us, it's nine eleven. Yeah. OJ. Right. Like those are two that even you know, bigger than like. I mean, Reagan got shot. He yeah. didn't get killed, but yeah. he got shot. Yeah. I mean, that was this a big is, story. But this, this is bigger. way bigger. Yeah. You know exactly where you were when you found out. Yeah. The chase when you saw the chase. Yes. You know exactly where you were when the verdict came back. Right. It's wild. Yeah. I was. You were bizarre. You were you were zygote. Yeah, that was, or I don't know. You, you were in your daddy's seed still. No, it depends <laughs> on depends. If it was in '94, yeah. If it was after February 16th of '94, I was on Earth. Oh, That's it. Well, it was June. Oh, I was here then. There you go. <laughs> it was June of yeah, I was. You know what I was doing? Getting a bottle of milk at the time <laughs> while he was getting chased. <laughs> <laughs> You know who, uh, remember Cato? Uh, those of you, Kato like Jason, yeah. I'm sure Steve remembers Cato. He actually came to Cleveland a couple of times for Comic-Con. And one time he came in studio with Dustin and I. I got a picture on my phone oh, really? of me and Cato. <laughs> wow. Cato was like, for those who watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, but you're too young to know about who Cato is, Cato was basically the Leon Black for O.J. Simpson. <laughs> You watch Curb? <laughs> no, but oh, okay. I know who that is. That's yeah, funny. All right. Anyway, so there you go. All right, uh, but we do have a lot of sports topics to talk about today. Mikey, we'll go say hello to you for the first time. What's going on? What's up, guys? Jam-packed show today. We had a Nick Chubb contract situation unfold mm-hmm. this morning, which pushed everything back a little bit, so we're going to try to squeeze a bunch in today. But first, a quick word from FanDuel. It is playoff time in the NBA, NHL, baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. <laughs> Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, 
and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And today's winning ticket, we have two today, comes from our guy Wayne on Instagram who hit a eight-leg same-game parlay from Shane Bieber's last start against Seattle. Oh, wow. I told you we had a bunch in the queue going back to last week, but he had the money line, Bieber over strikeouts, over alternate strikeouts, Castillo over strikeouts and alternate strikeouts, Quan to record a hit, Rodriguez to record a hit, Jose to record a hit. He turned four bucks into 106 bucks, so shout-out to Wayne for the nice. winning ticket there. But, Bull, we got to start with Nick Chubb. This morning, the news came out. Yes. You can drop it whenever you want, Steve. You can there drop we it go. like it's hot, Here Steve. It is. The Browns and star running back Nick Chubb have agreed. This was from Ian Rappaport on a rework contract for 2024. What happened? You were, Keep going. Steve, Steve's going crazy in the it's back. It's gone. I lost it. Uh, to lower his base of $11.775 million. Sources tell me and Tom Pelissaro with a chance to earn it back. Uh, they basically there, cut it in half. They cut the base. They cut the base. I, there was a thought. Fu- Do we have that tweet I, I sent you this morning for Jeremy Fowler? Do we have that one up or no? Yeah, we go. So there you go. So six point. The gap. The the cap hit is even even less than half because the cap hit. Even though his salary was going to be twelve, his cap hit was going to be fifteen point eight five. Now it's six point two seven five. Obviously, that's a significant difference. Almost ten million dollars there. There gives him the opportunity to earn up to twelve point two million based on performance levels, which is roughly what he was going to make this year. It's, I think it's a little more. It, it's basically what we said it was going to be. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah, almost, we were right on the money with it. You're yeah, right. So it was going to be six. Yeah. We, we thought six could make it all back. Six I, I to said eight it. with the opportunity to make it yeah. all back. Yeah. I said yeah. We, yeah, six to eight. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a fair deal. It's for, fair. For somebody. It shows you that they got a ton of respect for Nick Chubb. Of course. Because they could have, it could have got worse. Like, if they was really cutthroat about it, they could have, like, offered him really less than that. But Especially now, Tyvis. Because yeah. all, all the, the running, running backs like, is gone. There's no team. How many teams need a running back right now? And then so, on top of that, right. coming off of an injury like that, yeah. we'll just draft one instead right. and yes. have him for four years. So, they really, they show you how much they really do value Nick Chubb and the person that he is, that they, you know, give him a pretty fair deal, still let him earn a lot of his money back, which I think he still, if he starts week one, I think he will earn a lot of it back. If he doesn't, it'll be a, a tough hill or a tough climb, but I think they want to keep Nick Chubb in the orange or brown for the rest of his year, uh, rest of his career. I'll be curious to see when he's back. If he's, yeah. If, he's, if he makes it back for week one. I just don't. Uh, I wouldn't bet against him. I wouldn't bet against him, but him. I, I, the chances are slim. Well, you got it. I mean, if they because they've signed so many guys this offseason, right? You, I mean, you added. Well, I shouldn't say they signed so many. They signed two veteran running backs, mm-hmm. and you already had Ford, right? Right, and you already had Pierre uh, Strong. Pierre Strong. Mm-hmm. Now, they Pierre Strong could obviously be cut, but you signed <laughs> Deontay Foreman and Naheem Hines. Now, neither one of those guys is making that much money that you couldn't cut either of them. Right, but if You've got options. There's you got options, and I, my guess is if they were 100% confident Nick was going to be ready for they week one, have done they wouldn't have signed both of those right. guys. Well, probably. Well, I know they're a different type of players. About, still, for OTAs, you still need it. All right, fair. They, and for fair. preseason, you still need it. But you could have drafted right. it. You could have drafted. You yeah. could have signed like a slappy off. There's a lot know. of guys you can get off the street right. here at OTAs. Right. Those, I mean, they're not huge names. Oh, but they're but, but you, they're. but Foreman, at least, when you think about it, all right, it's just like the, it's just like how I feel about a, what's the court? Tyler Huntley. Yeah. You got to have somebody in there that models what your starter is. That's right. Foreman is that guy. Jerome yeah, Ford and the rest of is Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. Let's get you in there and work you through this offense. We're going to imagine that you Nick Chubb because you're the closest we could get to Nick Chubb in this office. We need to see what it looks like for timing and stuff yeah. like that. So I think that's why they went and got Huntley, and I think that's why they got Foreman. So he can. So when the other two are healthy and ready to go, the office already knows how to react to it because it's a timing thing. It's a good point. I, I think um, either of you guys, part of me was hoping they'd sign him to an extension. Not no. that they couldn't, but I, you no. didn't expect that, right? No. I didn't really expect I didn't it. Think it was, I don't think that would have been a good idea. Like, you just... You don't know what you get. That's exactly yeah. it. You don't you, know what you, you get. You have to see what... Right. And what if he he's back like. to who he is, then they can... Oh, yeah, yeah. Why would he want to go? I mean, he, you know... Well, it depends on... I guess you never know. <laughs> I mean, it depends on how he really feels about having to take this cut. Because it is a cut. For right now, it's a cut. True. He has the opportunity to make it all back. But right now, it's a cut. I'd be interested. But I do it. think they took care of him because no, you're yeah. right. They could have they been cutthroat about if it. If this is any other player, 
They would have. They would have been cut. They probably would have. Yeah. Well, Any other player, Nick if, Chubb is special to the organization. If they would have cut him, would that have like wiped the hit on the cap, the cap hit? Period. Uh, I believe it would have so. dropped it to four million. Oh, it dropped it to four. Oh yeah. Well, he had a four million dollar dead cap, so if he was oh, cut, okay, it still oh yeah, it. yeah. If anybody else, they probably would have. But also, they t- <laughs> they didn't really have a great replacement for him either. If they no. had a great, I mean, if Jerome Ford would have exploded last year and taken off with it. We might be having a different conversation today. You may be right. I, 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 and, and generally, I don't think teams care about what a guy means to the organization. I think in 99% of cases, it's all about business. Mm-hmm. It's all about the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think Nick Chubb, if there's any exception to the rule in Cleveland, it's Nick Chubb. I agree with that. He is the best team. He's the best of, He's the best of, 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 of it all. I just think a lot of factors fell exactly the way they yes, needed to fall. Yes, there's no doubt. In order for this to happen this yes. way. Yes. Because if he doesn't get hurt last year, what were we talking about in the summer? About how there's a really uncomfortable situation coming up. Right, right cause he because he had that 15 million. Because you know? he's not getting all that money. Right. Well, if he doesn't get hurt, again, this could have gone right. much, much different. No. So a lot of factors fell just the right way in order to make this I'm happen. I'm actually curious to know. What would have happened happen? if he, like, say he went out there and ran for 1,500 yards yeah. and had 13 touchdowns. Then they probably and, and they come in and say, take a cut. He'd well, be like, pro- it, I, it'd be like the Keenan Allen situation. Right. No, I'm not about yeah. to take no cut. I, I would, I mean, I would think in that case, you extend him and kind of spread the money out. Yeah, maybe. If, if that happened. That probably I mean, if he was that good, like, we were still yeah. played yeah. like a superstar. How old is he? Year. 28. He's 28, isn't he? I'll double check. I think he's 28. I don't know what, what his age season will be. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, yeah you probably. 28, he turns 29 in December of this season. Yeah. Okay. And he hasn't had, like, listen, with running backs, they usually go off the cliff before they turn 30, the majority yeah. of them. Yeah. Well. But I think to me, he's Adrian Peterson. Well, the, he's in that he same He very class. well might be. And Adrian Peterson was still good into his well, the 32, thing, 33 The thing season. about him is, let's go back to a couple of years ago when yeah. we was all complaining about the touches, the 20 touches. Right. The reason that they didn't was yeah. to extend his career. So now maybe yeah. he, he could go into his 30s and still be the same effect. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have a crazy amount of carries in college because he had knee surgery there, mm-hmm. right? He and, he and the Browns haven't. You know, they haven't used him like, like the Titans used Derrick Henry. No, they ain't right. running him into right. the ground. You know, and Derrick Henry can still play, and he's, I think, a year older than he's Nick Chubb, I believe. He's just used to it. His body's right. used to that. Although, to be fair, early in his career, when Derrick Henry first came to the NFL, he he, he, he didn't play that as much in his first season or two. Yeah. Who was he running back? I can't Chris remember. Johnson, wasn't it? What's that? Was did it? He, did he cross over with Chris Johnson? Chris Johnson I don't still remember. playing? But I remember no, when he came Chris to the Johnson league, I was saying, why aren't they playing him more? And then all, then they went from playing him like not enough to playing him more than anybody. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! I'm he, about to say CJ2K, bingo. Who was they he? were splitting carries though. I thought with somebody oh. else. I don't remember who though. I, I don't know why in my head it said Lendale White, but that can't be true, right? I'll get you guys the answer once. No, because that was C, that 16. was Chris Johnson that was splitting carries with him. His first year, he didn't have a ton of carries, right, Mike? He had 110 his first year. Right. 176 his second year. He's been That's over 200 every bad. year since. Right. I think if I remember correctly, and I don't know if you could do oh, this. Oh, you guys, you ready for this? Go ahead. Who he split carries with? Yeah. DeMarco Murray. No. Oh, wow. Did he die recently? He died? No, he's a running backs coach at Oklahoma. Oh, say? God, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I thought he whoa, died. Whoa. Yeah, no, no Marion Barber died, another former Cowboy, yeah, right? Yeah, Barber died. Marion yes. Barber, DeMarco right. Murray's still very much alive. Okay, sorry, DeMarco Murray. <laughs> I, that's, that's a bad job out of me. I didn't mean to make you dead, buddy. First, is, first not OJ, cool. not DeMarco. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he's not dead running backs. But I, I'm telling you, if I remember correctly, Mike, he ran 110 times in his rookie year, and I think – his second year, you said he had 176 carries. I bet the majority of them were the second half of the season because if I remember correctly, the first half he was still getting just a few carries. And then I want to say like the last six weeks of his second year, he put up absurd numbers. I want to say he had like 800 yards in the last six games. Am I right? No. I'm wrong. His last six games of his sophomore season, 32 he- yards, 79 yards, 109, 20, 19, 25, 51. That, that does not equal up to 800. Did he get more carries at the end of the year? Or no? <laughs> Who cares? Right? 13, 11, 8, 7, 8, 28. He had 28 carries for 51 yards. Yeah, and no all right. It's a fair point. Why are we talking about Derrick Henry? It's a fair point. I have no it's idea how we even got. How did <laughs> we get on Derrick Henry anyway? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, because I compared him to the, the Nick Chubb getting care. the carries compared to uh, Derrick Henry. So, really went so down so the Nick sidebar career. there for a minute. Through this point, since he's been drafted oh, in 2018, he has 1,238 carries. Nick Chubb? <laughs> One th- yes, 1,238. 
That is significantly less than Derrick Henry. Significantly One. less than Adrian Peterson had up to the same age in his career. Now, Peterson had 300 carries in five of his first seven seasons. So he's way, way yeah. above. And he was still effective at year 30. That was the year he ran for 2,000 yards. But Derrick Henry, who was drafted two years before, has 1,800 carries wow. since 2018. Let me so we're, we're talking significantly less workload, which I know Jay screams every time he's on the show that Nick Chubb didn't get enough carries. Well, yeah. in big-picture outlook, that may save some tread on his tires for these last yeah. year, Let's, two, three, however long he has left in a Browns uniform. Let me ask y'all two a question. Yeah. What – let what let's say let's let's go on and say Nick Chubb misses the first four games of the season. Right. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. What does he need by the end of the season for you to feel comfortable for the Browns to extend him for about two three years? I, I just think it's almost more the eye test. Like, does he look like Nick Chubb? Say that it's no not point. about the yards because you see Nick Chubb run and you know he's different yeah. than other guys. You'll yes. know when you see. Does he it. still look that way? Okay. You'll know. It when and you even see if it. he doesn't, the first game or two, I don't care. Right. Well, I don't, I'm not expecting we, him to. Right, yeah. but once he gets to his third, fourth game and the rest of the season. If he looks like Nick Chubb again, then I'm all in. I'm sticking with him. Plus, I think it's – we don't even know what this offense is going to look like. Like, we think – I think we have an idea what we think it's going to – but until you see it on the field, yeah, we don't That's even true. know how it's going to look, let alone with – because it doesn't – Right. The, Nick Chubb's style does not fit a wide-open no. shotgun approach offense. Yeah, the spread. So, I'm just – I'm curious to see how they marry these two together. They should, yeah. Like I said last year, they should do the pistol – let you go back to the pistol. If he wants to be behind the, the quarterback, it's the same thing. He could go boom and just turn around from yeah, the so gun. Like and the just pistol, turn he's standing right behind. Yeah, him, right? just stand right behind yeah. Deshaun, boom, turn around. It's still downhill. If you don't want to move laterally to get the ball or you right. want to get straight down, just do the pistol. Yeah. Now, Nick Chubb got off to a great start last year. I mean, he had a good game against the Bengals, and he was playing well in that next game before, obviously, he got hurt. I think he averaged over six yards per carry in his limited right carries. Right six yards. Yeah, so – um, you know, we'll see. It's, it, it is. You're right. He's coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. Deshaun, is this the last year of the deal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they did not extend the contract. No. Okay. They just reworked the final year. Okay. So I mean, your two. This is interesting. The two most important pieces on your offense are arguably Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb. They're both coming off serious injuries. Or, or And they're certainly the two biggest question marks heading into the season because of the injuries. <laughs> and with Watson, it's more than just the injuries. But they're the two biggest question marks. Like. Mm -hmm. But, the, the, you know, the, the scale of how good the Browns' offense can be, because think about it. If Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson, and, e, and even Jerry Judy. Mm -hmm. now, now, unlike Jerry Judy, okay. Watson and Chubb have had success in the league. Mm -hmm. Judy's just been kind of, you know, decent. But I think we all believe that, that Jerry Judy has more upside. Whether he'll ever reach it, who knows? Yeah. But he was drafted in the first round for a reason. He's a talented guy. Yeah. If those three guys all reach cl even close to as good as they can be, the Browns could have the best offense in the NFL or one of the top, you know, five at the very least. If, Whereas, if if Watson is the the same guy that I've seen for the last two years, and Nick Chubb is looking like he's coming off injury, and Jerry Judy's the same guy he's been the last few years. That's a disaster. They could be a mediocre offense. <laughs> that would be a disaster. I mean, that's a, that's a huge difference right there. And in, in reality, maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe two of them are close to what their yeah. peak, peak is and one is not, or who knows. Uh, but uh, I hope the you. upside of this <laughs> offense is, is very high. I hope Deshaun and Judy and everybody just – does well this season. I really do. Because that'll put a lot of things at ease. I think that'll clear up a lot of pitchers moving forward. Especially number four. If number four plays well, I think that clears up a lot of stuff heading forward. If he don't, man. Well, man, I mean, I think about you. this, Tyvis. If Sean Watson plays anywhere close to what he was in Houston, mm -hmm. then we're not having a conversation. If, if he has a season where he throws for – 4,500 yards and has 29 touchdowns. He has the G. Bush season. A G he, I'm not going to go that crazy, <laughs> but like, let's say 80% of G. Bush season, right? Because G. Bush had him with like 5,500 yards. I mean, it was just so like. You got a G. Bus season. Take the H yeah. off. It's a G. Bus. Season. Exactly. So, G. Bus season. So, if he come like, if he's that kind of quarterback where you're like, that's a top 10 quarterback. We got a top 10 quarterback. That's what we expected. Now, I guess in the beginning, we expected the top five. I think now we'd settle for top 10. 
So if he's a top 10 quarterback next year, and then we're not having a conversation probably about quarterback for at least a half a decade. Because if he's back to that guy, then eventually the, there's another extension, and then you got your quarterback for the next half a decade. How many least. years he got after this year? Three, uh, two. Two, two. This but year, if, then two more. But if he is not, next year the conversation is all about what are you doing at quarterback. Yeah. Because then you got to start thinking. And that's, that's a conversation that we've had a lot in Cleveland, Jason, as you know, and we don't want to start having those conversations again. I thought we were done with those conversations. I, think I certainly thought we thought were done, we were with, those done with those conversations. But I think we all said the other day, do you expect Deshaun to – be here after that contract, and we all said no. Oh, I wasn't here for that, but I wasn't here it was, for that it, either. Yeah, it was yeah. For, it was part of the dome conversation. Yeah, was I here for yeah. this? Yeah, Tyvis, you were sitting right in that. Chair. Yes, and I said, do you expect him to be here in twenty twenty nine? And you said no, and I said no. I thought you were here. No, I thought you said no too. Wait, so <laughs> I was not here on on Tuesday. No, that was, that was the day. That, Did uh, I say that? Yes. <laughs> I don't yeah, think Earl, I Earl said was in that. there. Earl was in there instead of Bull in. that day. So you don't expect him to be here in 29? I did not say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> did Roll I, the tape. Did I, I don't I, recall. That means, I mean, 29. We were talking about Deshaun saying he wants a dome. He wants a and dome. Jason, oh, and Jason yeah. brought up the point, well, he ain't gonna there's be a chance here. he's not going to be here if they build a dome. Well, how old would he be by then, right? That's, that's six seasons from now. What's he going to be, like 35? No, uh, less he's, than that. He's 28 he probably, now. He turns he probably 29 won't. in September. He probably so he'll be won't. 34. I, no, not, be, not because. <laughs> but if you're saying that, then that means you don't think he's going to be good. That's not what I'm saying. But if he gets back to, if he can get back to being a top quarterback, then why wouldn't he be here then? It's a lot of factors that go into a lot of things. Absolutely. You know? But Jason, if I told you that Deshaun Watson is lights out this year, that yeah. he's that the guy in Houston that we were hoping we got, he finally arrived in year three, and he's that guy. He's He's him, as the kids say today. Is yeah. that right? That's correct. Good job. That's so awkward when I say it. Um, and w- it, it, if I guaranteed that for this year, would you then change your mind about 29? Probably not. And is that because you don't think he can follow up on it? Or because, because something would happen got between now and then? His contract. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's contract. But why? Why? You think he wouldn't want to stay? Because I think, so this is not basketball. What I, I, know, think, what I, I think is this. Yeah. If, if, if he performs well, say he performed well this year and even next year, when you – a lot of teams still are looking for the next guy, to the cheaper guy. And, if you, and you know that once you pay that quarterback, it messes up the rest of the roster. So if you can get somebody that can be as effective, because at the end of the day, what last year showed you is, up until the last game, is that the coach really is pretty dang good. He gets the best out of all his players. Yeah. Right? So – why, why spend the money there if I can keep that money and get somebody else in there yeah, that but, can be as effective? But Tyvis. What? Am I, mean, I wrong? It, 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 okay, yes, but you're only right if you really don't think that quarterback is an elite quarterback. If he's top eight, top ten, you would do everything you can to hold exactly. on. I agree with that. You think, you think Joe Burrow is going to be on Cincinnati in 29? Yes. You think Patrick no. Mahomes is going to be on Kansas City in 29? He ain't yes. going to, He under contract. Okay, but if Joe Burrow isn't through 29, you think he's going to be there? Nope. You don't think so? Nope. Do you Joe, think his play is going to tail off? Nope. I think or, he may get discussed with the organization. That's what I think. Try and force his way out. That's what possible. I think. possible. Listen. I think they, it's going to come into a thing where T's going to leave, Jamar I mean, Chase is going to get mad, and he's going to leave, and Joe going to say, you know what, y'all let all my boys leave, and they take care of none of them. I think I'm he's going to be fine if T leaves. If they let Jamar Chase get out the door, then I, I'm with you. My point. But I think they'll sign Chase and they'll, the Higgins will be gone. With, uh, we'll with what money? They got money. Don't let them get you know, not, He doesn't have Jimmy Haslam money. but they Maybe they can money. put a second name on the stadium. <laughs> right. Put five names on the stadium. Who cares? Uh, go what ahead, do they Mike. call it now? Uh, Paycor Stadium. It could be Paycor Great American. Yeah, right. Exactly. Keep tacking them on. Speaking Ohio of, Edison. Speaking of stadium names, have you guys yeah. seen the triple layered progressive field signs in the front of progressive yeah, field? Yeah, I don't now? understand that. I didn't know. I didn't know. They have it. progressive field on the lower deck, then they have the big progressive sign, then right above it, if you didn't know that the first two levels indicated the name of the field was progressive field, there's another third bigger sign on top, all stacked on top. Yeah, of it's wild. And maybe progressive paid extra money? I don't so, know. No, I miss Jacobs Field. Mm. Well, you could still call it that. Progressive's not paying us anything. That's the thing. When people say the names of stadiums as with the sponsor, like, we don't have to say it. I miss the Gun Arena. Well, what else are you going to call it? That's the we name. We can still call it the Jake. Can I call it? People the, would know what we're talking about. Can I about. call it the Gun Arena? 
You can? The STD? You call it the STD. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. The <laughs> STD. Is that what people said? Oh, yeah. Gonorrhea. Like, say it fast enough? Gonorrhea. <laughs> what do you think it sounds like? Gonorrhea. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to do a read before we get too deep Clear that there. right up. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. We talked about the Nick Chubb contract reworking. Yeah. Two and a half weeks ago, we got news from the NFL owners' meetings that extensions were, quote, very close for Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry. This came out on March 25th. It's now April 11th. Where are the extensions at? You know, um, you know, Jason's been screaming about extensions for a while. Yeah, November. Uh, and I'm, I've been with him. Uh, and I'm... Now, in the end, is if they if they sign these extensions this offseason, then no harm, no foul. Right. But frankly, I'm completely baffled how these guys don't have extensions. But let me ask you guys this. Is it possible, and I'll just speak about, I'm not sure, uh, let's just talk from Stefanski's perspective. Um, is it possible it's not the Browns holding it up, but it, he, it, that he's holding it up? Do you think there's a chance that? Because he won more money? Either wants, listen, he's won two Coach of the Year awards. I, I think that's... Not worth as much as it sounds because it doesn't go to the best coach necessarily. It goes to the best coach of a team that wasn't expected to be good yeah. or had trying circumstances. However, he still has won two coach of the years, which means he's done a, a really good job two years in a row. or Not in a row, but two years. Is it possible he's looking for more money? He may be frustrated with ownership and wants to keep his options open. Is there any chance of that? I don't think so. It's a, it's a fair question, but... I think the money's probably agreed on. For Jimmy to come out at the owners' meetings and say it's close, yeah. Typically, at that point, the That's money, fair. the money's, okay. the money's already agreed on. So, so then, what do you think? The I, I don't is? know. There is always do... language. There's buyout language. There's there's all kinds of things that can trip up negotiations or slow things down. It's, uh, I know Dan Gilbert used to put in Cavs coaches' contracts, GM contracts, a stretch clause. If he fired you, you'd stretch your money out over X number of years. Mm. Oh, that's and, nice. And so that type of language, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's the minutiae of that. The, the big, obviously the biggest one is the, is the dollars, the annual dollars. For Jimmy to come out the owners' meetings and say we're close tells me that that part is done. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's that. I think it's the minutiae language, the, the, the secondary stuff probably. But, I mean, I, I have no good explanation for why it's not done. Right. I thought it should have been done months ago. Yeah. But I do still believe it, it will get done. They will look like absolute fools if it doesn't oh get done God. at this point. <laughs> so I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt on yeah. this, that it is going to get done. Well, you know when it's going to get When does OTA start? Uh, I, I think in a couple of weeks, right? Is, is it, it the like first OTA the middle of April? No, no, not practice. Like phase one where you like lift. Well, they'll be in April the building. 15th. April 15th? I mean, they'll have a rookie minicamp after the draft. That's when it's going to happen. Right. The rookie minicamp? It's going to happen. Even Why? It, Why then as opposed to cause that? Because everybody in the building again and, you know. It's, but don't, isn't Stefanski in the building every I'm day? I'm sure anyway? he is, but, like, yeah. to, to get the team riled up, like, hey, everybody, this right, is going right, to be right, our okay. coach for the next blah, blah year. Right. I just signed an extension. Everybody yeah. go, hey! Yeah, coach and team meetings. Right. I think that's why. So. Did you guys see – you were – here when we played this, but um, there was the clip of Deshaun Watson interviewing Kevin Stefanski on his podcast. Yes. Did you see that? I saw a couple of them. And he, where he really like... Gave him his flowers. Yeah, big time. Yeah. I was, you know, and like it's easy to say, oh, what's a player going to say? But he didn't have to go. He could have just, I mean, I don't think Kevin Stefanski was expecting Deshaun Watson to like praise him over the yeah. top. I, yeah. I don't know. It seemed pretty it was, genuine it was, to me. Yeah, it was nice. I, yeah. I, I thought I, it was... Yeah, I always thought they had a great relationship. The only time that I ever thought that it was something crazy or wild was the injury that 
I'm going to play Sunday, and then Sunday came right, around, right. and he went out after the game and said he was medically clear. Yeah, like, right. That was the only time. That, 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 that might have been the only weird. thing in Kevin Stefanski's tenure that I was like, whoa, what are you that doing? That was a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you, like, that whole thing was weird. He would, like, it, we don't have to relitigate it, but yeah. that was a strange. <laughs> there was it was. weird miscommunication <laughs> in that situation. The whole thing was, was very strange. But, no, I thought it was yeah. good for him to come out and say what he's – like, we talked about it. I, when they first got him, I wrote the story about how it was Kevin and Deshaun – chopping it up over film basically for right. 45 minutes on yeah. an iPad. It was just the two of them talking ball because no one else could see what was going. It was just, it was like me and Ty was with an iPad between us. You right. can't see, they can't yeah. see. And just talking about scheme and fit and what they want to do and, right. and how Kevin envisioned using them. And, and they really hit it off. And, and, you know, for Deshaun to come out and say what he said was, felt like a little bit of, of proof of that. There's every reason to believe that uh, Andrew Berry, and Kevin Stefanski, they 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 get along great, don't they? Or no? Barry and Stefanski, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, it, it's always seemed like they have a good relationship. They, they, they see it the respect. Same, yes, it they is, speak the same language. Yeah, they see it the same way. Yeah, they're pulling on the right. rope in the same direction. Which we, which I don't never, know, never had that yeah. here. Yeah. Well, at least uh, this you know, I've been here. You know, but another thing. Yeah, you know how? Well, maybe you don't know, but usually when it's time for players to get paid, mm-hmm. some of the coaches go to bat. Like, I need that guy. Take care okay. of my guy. For example. Debo Samuel, when he was in with the 49ers, right. you know, he, Kyle Shanahan really wanted him to stay. So Kyle was like talking to the upstairs, like, I need this guy. Like, yeah, right. give him his money. I need this guy. Once things got frustrated, Debo did what he did and blah, 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 blah. But in the, ultimately, he ended up getting paid. Same thing can go flipped, you know, for sure. the players. Ever yeah. since this offseason, every player, has come out and talked about how great of a coach Kevin Stefanski is. From Deshaun, Joe, uh, when we had DeAnthony Bell, everybody has talked yeah. about how incredible of a coach that he is. Not And it's not just coaching, it's the fact that he cares more. Even Justin, Justin Hardy came on on yeah. Tuesday. He don't even know him like that, but he was just talking about how the coaching staff is. They right. care about me as a person. He can get I, They gonna get the most out of me because of who they are and how much they care about my mentality and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I think this offseason has been for players, hey, we need to get our guy paid. We need to make sure that he stays yeah. here. And I think that's what you've been seeing. And it's very, it, I won't say it's rare, but it's special when you got players that's bought into a coach that believe in everything that a coach is doing. Because it's been times where we've been like, he's lost the locker room, even with the Baker stuff, and the Odell right. stuff. He's like, oh, yeah. he don't know what he's doing. But on the outside looking in, that's what it may look like. But on the inside, everybody has so much respect for Kevin Stefanski, and they just yeah. want him to stay. So I right. think this has been one of those operations where all the players is like, we got to do whatever we can to make sure this guy stays and everybody needs to know how special of a coach this guy right. is. And they've been successful at doing that. Now they just need to put the pin to the pad. And I think Stefanski and Barry are hand in hand. Like, you're not going to re-sign one and not the other, I would think. No, you would – You. Sh- I mean, they're on parallel tracks right yeah. now contract-wise. That right. should continue yeah. with and, extensions. And, and what I'll be curious, too, is, you know, not all extensions are the same. Obviously, money is different, but – like, sometimes you see a coach get a two-year extension. And you're like, oh, well, they, they, they're they committed to him, but not that committed to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like Kevin Savansky and Andrew Berry, I'm giving them a five-year extension. I mean, why would – if you're if you're Kevin or A.B., why would yeah. you take less? No, right, absolutely. You got five when you came here. You had to give <laughs> five because yeah. it's been such a tire fire for 20 years right. that you, you had to commit to them for five years to – in order for, I mean, Kevin was in Minnesota for what, 13 years? That's insane. Yeah. So you had to give him stability in order to get him to leave that situation. Right. He's done nothing to earn. How can you sign him for five years when he's done nothing? He wins two Coach of the Year awards. Okay, we'll give you three more. Right. What sense, sense does that make? <laughs> yeah. And you know what's interesting? Well, if the three more got a lot of dollar signs behind it. It is, it is going to have a lot of dollar <laughs> oh, yeah. like, to listen to me. Hey, 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 got him at a discount. <laughs> <laughs> it price went up. Would have been that much of a discount? Yes. yes. You think so? Yes. Second Coach of the Year award, put another yeah. zero on the All end right, of it. All right, fair enough. You know, and, and this goes, and, and again, and the reason you want to see him sign a long extension is because it goes to something that I talk about all the time, guys, and that's you, you never know if a guy's a great coach, right? Like, and you didn't know Andy Reid was a great coach by year two or three. You certainly didn't know Belichick was a great coach right away. Right. The question is, do I have a good coach? Yes. Because if I have a good coach with enough time and consistency – there's a decent chance he'll become a great coach Absolutely. eventually. Yes. And so, you, yeah, you don't want to get stuck with a bad coach. And so, yeah. 
But once you know a guy is good, I don't care if you think he's the third best coach or the 10th best coach in the league. Is he good? Yes. Is there reason to believe that if I give him more time, he's going to get better? Yes. Absolutely. And that's why you lock him up. Because if you lock both guys up for a five years on top of what you got, well, now there's complete stability in the organization for a decade, which this franchise has never had. Not since the you know, Yeah, not since it came back. Uh, yeah, and, long and, time. And how many times have we talked about it? You, everybody makes mistakes when you're new at your job. Of course, when you're first yeah. learning your job. You, right. You have to have the opportunity to learn from those mistakes, to grow, to get better, and go, boy, I really messed that up. I learned from that. Whether it's GMs and drafting, whether it's head coaches and how they structure a practice or run a team. You have to give them a chance to learn from their mistakes. Yeah. That never happens in Cleveland. Everybody's fired in two or three years. That's right. And except for the Guardians, in all sports, got yeah. most teams, they fire the coaches in two or three right. years. You, know what's you have to give them a chance to learn from it, and the Browns have finally You know what's funny about that? I just thought about it. As you said that, I thought about the Browns draft the receivers in the third round. Do you know that they've taken three different type of receivers? They took a speed guy, a possession guy, and a big body. Oh, I'm guy. aware. They, but they like they keep trying to figure it out. Like yeah, they keep realizing they, at they least they're not cat. making the same mistake. Oh, we didn't get the fast guy. We gonna go try to get another fast guy. We gonna try to go get another. Like yeah. at least they like trying to figure this well, wide receiver thing out. So you gotta give them credit for that. At least I, I go early. They're they got, not making the same mistake. But they've got it wrong three times. Yes, in a row. At least but it still, seems that way. but still, I'm not giving up on Cedric <laughs> Tillman yet. It's only one year. I thought he showed a little problem. I just. I think it's, it's fascinating. I just thought about it like at least they did draft three different types of wide receivers. <laughs> like they didn't go get the same type of receiver. Yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, and they know they really screwed up with Anthony Schwartz. They they know they oh, yeah. they know that. Oh, that yeah. was that was a huge blunder. But yeah. in the end, you know, what are you gonna do? All right, Michael. And by the way, one thing one thing real quick, because I think this is a great comparison, an NFL coach and a little league coach. So <laughs> I, I was mentioning <laughs> No, but seriously. I was mentioning that we had our first practice Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. And now that I've been coaching for a couple of years, I handled my first practice totally differently. Sure, yes. And we did, like, different drills. Yes. Because I was like, here's what's worked the last two years. and here's... So if it's going to help me as a Little League coach improve, imagine what somebody at the top of their profession Absolutely. can do. Yeah. Because that's what he's spending his whole life is yeah. doing that, yeah. essentially. Well, how well, many Little League playoff wins do you have? <laughs> so you're not on Kevin Stefanski's level. He has one. So hey, don't, I, don't compare yourself. Well, to he wasn't there, so I don't think he has. Hey, I'm Marv Levy of Little League coaches. I get you the championship game and, and lose, lose every year. Every you are year the Marv lose. Levy. Uh, but there, there's some. Oh, um, t- to your point about yeah. being a rookie, um, Stephen Vote yesterday was talking about batting averages, and he said, "I don't even look at the board. Like I couldn't even tell you what our guys are hitting right now. It's so early. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, you know, we don't we don't count that." Yeah. Not that it doesn't count, but he just doesn't pay attention to it. Yeah. Miles so I Strong said, should be on this roster, dude. Oh, Lord. I said, I said, <laughs> when, I said when do you start paying attention yeah. to it? He goes, I don't know. I've never done this before. Yeah, right. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he said, he right. said around 100 at bats, yeah. but he's like, I've never done no, this. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It and it's sense. one of those, like, That's and, hilarious. And next year, he'll be a better manager than right. he is this year for having gone through it once. Especially in the beginning, beginning of the year, you can go from hitting 400 to 200 that in one day. Point. That, that was his point. That is hilarious. He said that. That's yeah, good. I love yeah, that man good. already. That, and we will get to the Guardians of the Comfort Behind win next hour. First, let's go to Mike. Uh, coming up tonight at 5 o'clock, we got Earl the Pearl with another episode of the Ultimate 216 Show. If you guys haven't checked out Earl's combo <laughs> of sports, culture, lifestyle, you guys are missing out. It's a great 30-minute program each and every week, so make sure you guys tune in at 5 o'clock today for the Ultimate 216 Show with our guy, Earl the Pearl. While we're speaking of coaches and on the topic of coaches, general managers, etc., I thought it would be a fun exercise for yes. us to go back to the, well, I know you don't like the word modern day, modern era, but 99 No, on. it's fine. I was making fun of you because usually when people talk about modern era, it's like since the 1950s or since the 1960s. For you, it's since 1999. Yes. <laughs> it's the so modern since era. Since 99, looking at all the coaches and front office personnel who have worked for the Cleveland Browns, I thought we'd go together. And I got a point I want to make with this at the end. I want to see if you guys come to the same conclusion I did. But we're going to create the ultimate Browns coaching staff slash general manager. I bet we use, all have the same guy. Uh, I bet you my special teams coach is different. You guys can use anyone who coached for the Browns in any position I you guarantee want. guarantee you mine's different. It's 99 and on. Yeah. But you can mix and match if you want to say, for example, Freddie Kitchen should be your OC. 
he could he could be that even though he no, was I won't be saying so, so. <laughs> with that, let's start with the head coach Freddie all the guys stop it Freddie Kitchen stop it who do you want <laughs> <head coach? laughs> you need to cut it out Freddie Kitchen pound on the table by the way Freddie Kitchen might you I don't know if you knew that he was the OC he was the OC yeah it was a bad thing I mean if you're gonna campaign for Philip Walker well you want to start for head coach you don't want to start like you don't want to build up you want to start right with the head coach. Start, you start wherever you want. What do I you mean, want to start let's start. All right, well, you brought. Uh, let's do head coach. I mean, is there any debate against Stefanski? Freddie Kitchens. Shh, don't listen to this man. <laughs> <laughs> he, this man is a troll. <laughs> Mike Freddy Patton. Kitchens. You know what? I actually, I think, I think Mike. I wish that. I wish they would. Mike Patton, yeah. hundred percent got a raw deal, yeah. and he is the sec. I think the second best. Coach. I agree with that. Is, you know what? I yeah. think Mike Patton. Has career long PTSD for oh, 100%. He wants no part of head coaching coach ever again. It was so bad here. At, it's too bad because I, I, I yeah. really liked him. And he wasn't a good head coach, but I actually think Pat Shermer's a good coach. He's just not a head coach. He's not a head coach. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Stefanski's the head coach, right? Yeah. Oh, course. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What else could you that, yeah, we, 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 if we all come to the same conclusion yeah. with the point okay. I wanted to make. So Stefanski's yeah. the head coach. Offensive coordinator. Where do you guys want to go? Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan. <laughs> it, this may take five minutes, and that's fine. Yeah. No, they, they, we'll have some. We'll have some. I think now is where we'll split. Okay. Those were pretty easy. Yeah. Those I think those easy. were easy. Okay. You, you yeah. can make a case for Shermer as OC, probably. Maybe. Yeah, but come but, on now. But we're judging them based on their time in Cleveland. Well. Which is weird, but all right, yeah. go ahead. As DC, where do you want to go? There's like three or four guys. Jim or Romeo. I got. I picked Schwartz. That's my. I point. got Jim or Romeo. I mean, we got to get off the fence there, Ty. I know. I, but I, I love Romeo honestly, though. Hey. Romeo should have stayed here. Honestly, coach. like Greg Williams. Yes, yeah, that's a candidate. Greg Williams G- was like Butch Davis is a DC. Greg I think Butch is a, a DC. Mouth. G-Dub. Well, he wouldn't be my number one, but he's yeah. in the. I played for G Dub. Well, for OTA. Romeo Cornell. <laughs> um, it's a lot of good. Listen, Eric defense Mangini. was pretty good around here for like many years. Did they ever? I listen. You but could, Jim Swartz I, was about to break records last year. I mean, it ended badly. Certainly, <laughs> it, did, it did. But they went from being a a poor, a terrible defense the year before to one to one of the best in the league last but year. But they were always great the last six games under now, Joe Woods. I would, uh, it, to be fair to these other guys. Jim Schwartz probably had more talent to work with than a lot of these for other guys. For sure. Yes. yes. 100%. But I'm still voting for Schwartz, so you guys got to go see what your votes are. We'll see what, you, what we end up the with. The G-Dub thing to mess me up. That's because I got personal ties there. I uh, mean, I, I think Butch Davis was a really would be a really good defensive coordinator. So it's on me now. Well, <laughs> but, no, because if you pick someone else, Earl If you pick a third breaker. person, then they can break the tie. Earl be the tiebreaker. Well, I don't want to do that. G. Bush called in and said he <laughs> wants Joe Woods. He texted I would him. actually take – I would take Romeo Cronell. Okay. I would take Romeo Cronell. So Why one would for you Jim, one for Romeo. that? I think he's I really good. No, I was in the fence here. I think he was, I think he was <laughs> really good as a No, I was literally sitting on the fence of these two oh, names. Oh, Jim Schwartz and, and Romeo. Romeo. That's well, the first two names go. I see. All the pressure's on. Greg we- Williams. <laughs> Oh, three-way so tie. Tyvis didn't want the pressure. Earl, you're the tiebreaker. If you had to pick one DC for the Browns, you have Jim Schwartz, Romeo Cornell, or Greg Williams. Who's your tiebreaker here? I was thinking. Jim Schwartz. Schwartz. You can't argue it. Are you, it's no way any, you can argue any it. Any of those three would be fine. Yeah. All right, so Schwartz it is. Earl breaks the tie. I think I know where Mike's going with this. That they that they Special coach the staff right game. now is yeah. probably the best has ever been. Yeah. That's that's. Where I will not reveal this. my point till we are concluded with. Well, this I mean, exercise. it seems pretty obvious what your point is. <laughs> we do it before the, the project started, but Ray Farmer for special for teams. Special teams? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to throw a wrinkle. Eric Mangini. Oh, he was thinking. such was an he attention a, to detail guy. He was a special team. No, but I think oh, he'd be a phenomenal. You're just putting him there. He would be a phenomenal special team. I'm teams going coach. and and what's his name? Bubba Ventron's done a nice job, and yeah. he's a good choice. But I'm going with a guy who was here and survived a lot of different regimes. Chris Tabor. Yeah, he survived. I, I think three or four. Hey, regimes. I like Chris. And when the Browns <laughs> sucked year after year, there were many years during his time that they actually were good on special teams and terrible at everything else. Yeah. Hey, I like Chris. And I know he listened to my show on the radio because he had told me that. So oh, I like. I like Chris, up. man. I'm Chris, Chris is Tabor, baby. Chris He's is there for uh, coach forever. He was there when I did my little OTAs with the Browns. Real funny dude. Real funny guy. 
That's my vote. Chris uh, Tabor. So Tabor, we have one for Mangini. Tyvis? Okay, you, you threw me off with the man, Gene. Let's go, like, Titus. Why would you do Let's that? Let's go. I think he was not? an excellent coach. I'll take, I'll take Chris. I'll take Chris. Oh. All right. Chris Tabor. Tabor. We all left Bubba Ventrone out. All right, no, it's just because I don't – even though he's done a really good job in the kick, I need I, – I, I'm a return guy. I need to see a big okay, return. Yeah. All right. And finally, the GM. It's a big – this is a tough one. I don't think it's tough at all. It's that was Andrew sarcastic. Barry. And I don't, sarcastic. and I think Andrew Berry has been Who was above before average. Andrew Berry? Not any better than that. John Dorsey? But Dorsey. Dorsey. I mean, Dorsey. Dorsey's in the conversation. Yeah, I'm about to say Dorsey was not bad. Although he so, picked Baker, and that's a Sashi. That was a miss. So, that's a miss. I mean, and, and, and in fairness, Baker should have always turned out to be what he was last year. Or maybe not quite, maybe uh, somewhere around No, there. I think last year's like, about what he is. He's a decent NFL yeah. quarterback, yeah. but you're not winning a Super Bowl. But who of that class did he, uh, I mean, Josh was the miss. Josh Allen was wow, the and Lamar Jackson. And Lamar. Sashi Brown, because yeah. he hired, he gave me an OTA's job. So Sashi Brown was awful. That's my pick. Uh, he, he hired me. I actually, I think Phil Savage was pretty good, but he's not better than where they're at now. Yeah. So I, I would go, I'll say A.B. I, I do think that there's other guys you can have in that discussion, but I would say A.B. Yeah. Andrew Berry it is. So with 60% of the current regime on your 99 and on, I think it's safe to say the Browns are in pretty damn good hands right now from the front office uh, certainly. coaching perspective. Certainly. And by next year, Bubba Ventrone could easily be on that list. And, and maybe Ken Dorsey. Certainly. That's, that's possible. I, I would be shocked. It, but. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? There's no chance. Wait a, wait a minute. No. That's, Kyle wait. Shanahan. Kyle Ken Shanahan. Dorsey yeah, you, Kyle you're Shanahan. not. Nah, yeah, 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 that ain't you ain't. Yeah. But it could, it could improve to four out of five next Never year. Never mind. That, that's no defensive year. line coach. Do you want us to do that? If you really want to go that deep. I, I, all I know is for... Defensive line coach. Well, G. Bush said it's only putting cones out, so I'm going to vote for G. Bush as the defensive line coach. And when we're talking about GM interns, I vote to Quell. I refuse to hear another argument for anyone on a GM intern other than to Quell. Hmm. GM interns? GM interns. Oh, yeah, okay. Quell Jackson, that's DeQuell it. Nope, I ain't, I'm not giving it to him. Nope. Whoa. Pause. Mm. All right, Mike, what do we got next? <laughs> Uh, we're going to move on here after a quick word from FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, NHL, and baseball is in full swing. FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. And right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose, you can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and our second winning ticket of the day comes from our guy, Dion Flores. He sent it in last week. He turned $9 into $160 on a seven-part same-game parlay mm -hmm. between the Bucks and the Pelicans from last week. He hit on all the over points for Lillard, Zion, Giannis, plus the alternates for all of them and turned 9 bucks into $159.56. So shout-out to Dion for that win. We got one last Browns thing, Bull. Before we do that, I got a couple of important notes Shoot. that we got to put out here. Number one, make sure if you have not done so already that you have subscribed to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. It costs you zero dollars and zero cents. All you have to do is take a half a second out of your time and click on the subscribe button. We started the show nearly two years ago. May 9th will be the second anniversary of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And our goal is to get to 40,000 subscribers by May the 9th. We are roughly 750 away from 40,000, give or take. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's under 800. About 750, I'll say. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button. Tell all your friends. Everybody right now watching the show, I know we got, I think I, we got a few thousand people watching the show right now. If all of you just look and make sure you've hit that subscribe button, maybe we'll add another 100 people right now, maybe 200 people right now. So thank you for doing it. We appreciate your love and support. So please do that. Also, speaking of support, I will be doing a live edition of my podcast, The Bullpen, today at 2 p.m. So please join me live for that. We'll talk about the Nick Chubb uh, New Deal and about the Guardians uh, with the big weekend coming up against the Yankees. 
We'll see you later. Mike, go ahead. Last football topic. Of the Last day. football talk- topic, then we'll talk some Cavs and some Guardians. But we found out yesterday that the Eagles will play the Packers in Brazil. Yes. Oh, Hurst spilt the beans. The beans were the incorrect beans. And it uh, did not turn out to be the Browns versus Philadelphia in week one. So I asked you guys instead. We know it's not the Eagles in Brazil. So what's your ideal week one matchup for the Browns? And Tyvis, we'll start with you. Oh, um, I said the Chargers. The reason I picked the Chargers is because in Cleveland, first of all, yes. got to be in Cleveland. Yeah. One because I think that it's a lot of guys that's working back from injury, and the Chargers got a new head coach, and he's trying to establish his culture, how he wants to play. So I think the Browns is a nice tune-up game for them to get into the season, get hit their groove against a team that has really good talent. It's not like if you beat the Chargers, people are gonna say. Oh, you beat the Chargers. Who cares about that? No, that's a very talented team. And if Jim Harbaugh gets them right where they need to be, that's a team that can do well in the playoffs. So I picked the Chargers for week one. I think that's this game that a lot of people will come to see. A lot of hype around it. And it's a great competition for guys to get back into the things. And if you make plays against them, it won't be looked at as fluke. Any concern that teams from the great state of Ohio have struggled to beat said head coach in recent years? What do you got? What are you getting at? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do <laughs> All I'm going to tell you is it's a different league. Yeah, this is a different league. Very true. Very it's a different, true. Very different true. league in college. <laughs> Chargers were actually on my list. And yeah, I, me too. I told Mike, like, if we need variety, I could easily argue the Chargers for a, a lot of what you said. Mm-hmm. New head coach coming back. First game. The first game is the most, like, variance, right? Like, yeah. weird things can happen in week one in the NFL. That's why, give me the Giants. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> the Giants in week one at home. You can make a case for, like, the commanders on the road. They're not very good. Like, get a road game out of the way early, yeah. you know, against a bad team. And plus, also with the Chargers, maybe you want to catch them in week one before they, <coughs> before Harbaugh sort of gets his footing about being sure. back in the NFL again. But you always want to start one to know it's something the Browns have struggled to do, and the Giants blow. What's wrong? So give me the what? Giants in you week know, one. You know they got arguably one of the best defensive lines now, right? Give me the Giants in week one <laughs> and a one to know start. Who's their quarterback? Who is they running back? McNugget? Uh Devin Singletary. Oh yeah, that's who. I mean, he's, he's, they suck. He's right. They suck. He's a guy. No, he's dude, a guy. The, when I looked through the list yesterday, and I was like, oh, that's easy. The Giants. <laughs> You can make a case for the Chargers, and Did I'm sure you, Bull will give you a good answer. Please, Bull, but tell me you went, you went towards my way. Uh, meaning what? You went more competitive. I did. Thank Even, you. In fact, I picked the opponent. Don't put it up yet. The <laughs> opponent I picked is better than both of these teams. See, oh, you're wrong. See, here's the thing. We're probably all wrong, by the way, because they'll probably end up playing the Bengals, the Ravens, or the Steelers week one. But Yeah, that's true. No, we're not predicting. This is our idea. No, I know. So. But here's the thing. And I – Jay – lives in in brown's fear and he always wants to play the worst team <laughs> you said the chiefs didn't you no i did not say the chiefs okay. although i considered the chiefs <laughs> i thought about so it too, to be way. honest with you but i like jason brought up the point that the week one is wacky yeah so like even if you play a, a team you think is going to be bad and ultimately will be bad week one sometimes you see it all the time a, a team that you think sucks Plays great in week one, okay. wins, and then they lose 12 of the next 13. Yeah. Are you okay with that? And so. They, if they lose the Giants in week one, oh my I don't worry Lord. about how good the team is. Like, I don't worry about playing a bad team week one because I think a bad team can bite you in week one. Okay, wait. So I'm like, I want to play a good team. Now, I didn't want to pick the Chiefs because they're the best team. <laughs> But I they said could I be our, they could come off with a Super Bowl hangover. You could have got them. Yeah, out the I, I want to play a g- very good team, a team that's gonna a team that if you beat them, you're gonna get talked about a ton. The Chargers right off week one. Chargers. Uh, you're, the Chargers maybe this team you're getting way more talk. Show them, Mike. The Dallas Cowboys. Mm. That's all that anybody ever talks about on ESPN. They only <laughs> talk about the Cowboys. <laughs> that's true. Too. So and now. On that Monday, on all the shows on ESPN, if the Browns win, it's going to be what's wrong with the yeah, Cowboys. The D- Dak is no good. Yeah. Fire Mike McCarthy. Yeah. But still. That's a good pick. I thought about that. I, that, I think that's an exciting that week one Miles game. Miles was between the Chargers, Chiefs, and Cowboys, yeah, actually. The Ca- that's a home game, too. Browns have, a, on paper, a brutal schedule. A really now, so, schedule. so does everybody else in the North, pretty much. But So, typically, Bull, I tend to agree with you that I want to get a hard game off the way early, especially at home. But with the uncertainty of Deshaun coming back from the shoulder injury, with Nick Chubb, he might not be ready. 
I want to push those harder teams back towards the end of the season when I know Nick Chubb will be back as close to 100% as he could be. Do we know that? Through. Well, I'm, I'm maybe by then those guys are hurt again. Who knows? Well, maybe, but that's that's my in my head thinking. I also okay. consider the Chiefs because they might be without Rasheed Rice in the first two weeks of the season, first couple of weeks. That's so, the game changer for you. No, I'm just I'm just All walking right. through my thought process, and I also like starting at home. But then I came to this conclusion because I agree with Tyvis, new head coach, you don't know what you're going to get. With Jason, potentially a new quarterback, you don't know what you're going to get. And I think if you're going to have to send your team to a city with as many distractions as what I'm about to put on the screen. I want to do it as early in the season oh, guys I know where as you're locked going. in, focused as possible. So let me head to the Vegas and play in the new Las Vegas Raiders Dome. Get that out of the way early. You can't get distracted in week one. You're locked in. It's a bad team, a new head coach, a potential new quarterback, or Gardner Minshew. That's a dangerous I agree game. with the idea to start 1-0. You yeah. better be able to beat the Raiders. And I think that's the best of both cases. That's a, that's Although dang- the Browns struggled against Gardner Minshew last year. They won the game. That's a danger, That's a dangerous game. You play that right there. What you just put up? That's that's one of the ones that you they I can see them losing week one in Vegas. Because I don't think the Raiders are going to be terrible. First of all, they they play for that coach Antonio. Pierce. I agree with yeah. that. They play for him. First of all, they did no. But they second did of all, coming they, off the interim status though, Ty. We still got to see still, what happens at the full time. Still, when you got a player saying that they leave if y'all don't hire a coach, not you, just a player, your best your player. best player. Yeah. Then you go. Didn't they get Christian Wilkins as well? They did. Okay, so the D-line is extremely better. Yeah, and Gardner Minshew, while he's not great, is he way stood, better than what he, they had. He hit the shoulders on us like he three times. So what are you year. talking about? Yeah. yeah, that's a dangerous game. No, I, I don't know about th- that. That one. is not ideal dream because I need to go to Vegas in December when it's cold, <laughs> not when it's warm we in September. We need to take a UCSS trip. To Vegas. to Vegas. Come on, Steve. I've never been. Steve, get on that, buddy. Never You've been. never been to Vegas? I haven't either. Everything that, what? You've never been everything to Vegas? that goes on in Vegas, Believe it or not. I don't do. What? When I wasn't. <laughs> there's, there's some good shows there. Here's, yeah, well, that's what, that's what, that's what everybody show. says. Nobody gives, gives a rat's ass. No, the there are. There, there's all kinds of good Here's shows. Here's why I never went to Vegas. When I was gambling, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> when I could afford it, I stopped gambling. <laughs> so... Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I, I uh, love all right, Vegas. there it is, I love Mike. Vegas uh, yeah, let's talk a little Guardians now, guys. It was a... Well, you know, I, I feel like we should let Earl make his pick, maybe. Oh, do you want to add one to that? I mean, you left out Earl there, Mike. That's not really uh, nice. he, He's cutting the show. He declined to comment here, so... Here I am, stepping up to bat for Earl. I see, mean, how, just see how the they ball. do you? See how I can't believe you, it. Man. He could have came up with something Left right now. Hanging. Earl's going to give his prediction on the Ultimate 216 show today at 5 o'clock. Excuse me? So make sure you guys a big shot. At 5 o'clock, if you missed the Ultimate Cavs show earlier this week, you can tune into that. The Ultimate Guardian show is on Monday. Another great episode. Uh, we will be on Zach. Tuesday again next week. I said the one was on Monday. You're oh. coming up on Tuesday at 9.30. Next week because of the early marathon Memorial – not Memorial Day. Uh, Patriots Day. Marathon Patriots Day, Day, Patriots Day in Boston. So make sure to tune into all the Ultimate shows. Also the Ultimate Brown show every Monday and Friday. You can listen to UCSS in podcast form if you want, and you guys can check it all out. Whenever you want. By the, the way, can, Cleveland Sports Show channel. Sorry, Mike. Can you go back to the picture of the Ultimate Guardian show? We can. I guess, here's what it looks like. It looks like I'm excited about something inappropriate, and Zach is terrified about it. He's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You do have an right? evil-looking grin on I, your it's face. Like, yeah. It kind of looks, like, kinda looks like, like Zach's your, you're the ventriloquist puppet, and Zach's your master right now. Um, and he's trying to talk to his That's a little lips. disturbing, Mike. Mm-hmm. That is very It looks disturbing. like a bad buddy kind All of right. Movie. On that note, you had to ruin a good thing. I don't know what happened there. Uh, from, uh, I'd be ultimate- one heavy puppet to have to hold. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of string. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually on a stool. All it's right, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about Guardians. It was a hell of yes. a win yesterday. Down 5 nothing again in the Nando yes. Bros. On National Sibling Day. Came back in heroic fashion. They homered in the same inning. They drove in the game tying run in the 10th. And then Bo hit the game winning run in the 10th. And for a second there, it was scary, Bull. Another bad start from the starter. Tanner Bobby did not look great, but the offense came yeah. through and bailed them out when it mattered most. Before we do the deep dive into the game, Bo Naylor, Josh Naylor, as you mentioned, both homered. And then they both got hits in the, to win the game in the last inning. Yeah. But it's the first time brothers oh, have shit. hit home runs in the same game for the same team since. And want to guess what year and who they were? 1985. I don't know the answer. Not that long ago. I'm going <laughs> to guess. Oh, I would guess the Boons. Was it the Boons? No, not that long ago. 2004. I can't think of another set of brothers since the Boons. 2013 no. Atlanta Braves 
The Uptons. Oh, the Uptons. The yeah. Uptons. All right. I had forgotten that they played together for a little while. Yeah. Man, BJ Upton was so weird. Like, that guy for a couple of years was, was phenomenal. phenomenal. And, and then they he just went fell off the cliff. cliff. And kind of Justin Upton Same. did that, too, yeah. to yeah. some degree. Did the, the Boons did play together, didn't they? Didn't Brett and Aaron play together? I don't or no. know. I Maybe don't not. remember. Maybe I'm making that. Maybe they didn't hold her in the same game. Whatever. Doesn't matter. We're going to go down a boom yeah. rabbit hole. Brett like juicing and Kennedy. whatever. Whoa. Anyway. Uh, Allegedly. So, in terms of the game. So, two games in a row, the Guardians have to come back down 5 nothing. They they come back down 5 nothing in the second game of the series. They end up losing. Yeah. They come back down 5 nothing. It's McNuggets to win this game. I know it's the White Sox. You don't really want to be in a position against a terrible team like the White Sox yeah. to have to come back from 5. But I'll tell you what, this team has shown a ton of resiliency they have. offensively. Yes. yes, they have. And even though they didn't play a perfect series, far from it against the White Sox, mm-hmm. in the end, four straight series wins to start the season. They've taken care of business. Take it. McNugget, yeah. McNuggets jinxed them. He did? Yes. Well, he they did. won, so he couldn't have jinxed no, them. No, he jinxed them because he, Tuesday, he, we, we was talking about Tristan McKenzie's yeah. start. And he was like, it's like they got one of the worst – they got one of the worst batting lineups in in their in MLB. They can't when they're hit, healthy, they're they actually, can't hit it. Their lineup that's, isn't terrible. When that's what healthy, he said. He was like, "Well, right now worse. nobody's healthy. Yeah. They're not good at all right now." Blah blah blah. And ever since he said that statement, they were start racking off runs. Well, so, big yeah, because Jimenez is hurt as always. Yeah. Roberts hurt. <laughs> and then Mankata out. got hurt. He didn't play. He's yesterday. out six months. Or something yeah, crazy. yeah. Big Nuggets. So now they're you can't comment on batting orders no more. Gavin Sheets. Sheets off to a good start. He yeah. had a double yeah. and a homer. Yeah. Um, you know who else homered yesterday? Stephen Kwan. Sure yeah, man, did. did. He did. Sure he smoked that ball. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I mean, that's two. His career high six. Yeah. So clearly, he's he struck out more. Zach and I were talking about that in the press box the other day. Zach said he's like, he's got eight strikeouts already. But this is the trade-off that you're trying to make with yeah. Kwan is you're trying to get to a little bit more power. And if that comes, I mean, he's still hitting 386. So if that it's comes ridiculous. with a little bit more swing and miss, I don't care. You take it. Yeah, hundred percent. Right Where are the Guardians in in the home run? They, uh, as of two days ago, they were twenty eighth in home runs per game. I'll look it up right <laughs> no, now. No, 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 no. See, I don't want to do it like that. Well, I, it's got to be per I game. I don't want you, you to play no, a different amount. No, I don't want you to do it like that. Well, I did it runs per game too. I want. I don't want. Titus, they are tied for eighteenth. Yes, that's the number that's I'm looking for. Stat. That's oh, what I'm looking for. Here we come, top fifteen. Guardians in terms of runs per game <laughs> are tied for fourth with the Pirates. Who had that? The Guardians and Pirates, Pirates tied, tied for, for fourth. fourth. In um, terms of home runs per game, it's probably up a little now because they had three yesterday. Home runs per game. Uh, They're tied for 19th, Tyvis. Okay, so it wasn't any it's still, not much different. I like 18 better. Actually, and, and their percentage points away from their – Less than a, a hundredth of a percent behind Colorado and Seattle for a tie for 17th. So that's basically Colorado right. hitting yeah. home runs like that? So, well, they play in helium. Yes. So they, they play in the helium dome okay. yes. there in Denver. Well, um, there is, you know, it's too early to be worried, but two out of three starts, Tanner Bobby has not looked good. No, he's looked and, awful. And that's a guy that you're really yeah. counting on. He's so supposed you hope to be the ace. Well, I tweeted yesterday, and I wondered, and, and some, somebody responded to me and said, well, it didn't matter last year, but I'll explain why I think it's different. And maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I wonder, and, and again, you're right, he pitched poorly in his first start, but I wonder, because Bybee and Allen both pitched terribly this week, mm-hmm. I wonder if some of that is, oh, man, uh, Bieber's hurt. we got to do more. Like, are they... Putting too much pressure on them. Last year they were rookies. Yeah, you know it was the middle of this early middle. They didn't start the season with the big league club. Yeah, there's more expected of them this year, especially yeah. by me. I, 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 I wonder if I that don't factored think in at all. I don't think it's that as much as teams now have a full year of tape on him, and yeah. now they have a better understanding of his pitches and. How many times you see it? A guy's second year. Yeah, there's a little bit of struggle there. There's That's a regression true. until you sort of make the adjustment to the adjustment. And I I think it's more of that with Bobby that he's got to figure out now. Yeah. Guys are sitting on whatever. And, and now how do you adjust? He's still really talented. I think he's going to do great. I think he's going to have a great year. Right. But, Two out of three starts now. He's been knocked around quite what, a bit. And your, the two starts that he's been knocked around by Oakland, Oakland and Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. What, was your, what was your bold prediction before the season? Bybee would 
catch Cy Young votes. Okay. Off to a bad start. Okay. Yes. I just wanted, I just wanted to make sure you were all <laughs> tired. Oh, I know. It's not far off. Oh, right come now. on now. But it, it's, it's April 11th. That's so what? Uh, a couple this of, thing is it's headed this way right here. This where the home run, they're going just like I this. said a few days ago <laughs> when, when they, they were, in terms of runs per game, they were like third and, and home runs per game, they were 28th a couple of days ago. And that's not sustainable, right? You're not going to finish top five in runs if you're bottom five in in home runs. Usually. But you can be top five in runs in the <laughs> middle of the pack yeah. in home runs. The goal for the guard, yeah, in a perfect world, we'd love them to be a top five home run team. We know sure. that's not going to happen. If they can be even close to the middle of the league, then they'll have a chance to be really good yeah. offensively. Yeah. They are funny for that. That, 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 that to me, power hitter. <laughs> they hilarious. Oh, that was after the Stephen Kwan home run. Oh, I the love that. Last night. But uh, also, Bo's home run, by the way. Yeah, that was a rocket. That was. A I'm talking bomb. like an absolute piss missile to uh, left center. And, and they're called swamp donkeys now. I just learned that. Swamp donkeys. When swamp you crush donkeys. a home run, it's a swamp donkey. That's what the kids call it. Swamp donkeys. I thought they were piss the missiles. The players are like also kids. Piss missile. No, the like kids. Like your kid. kid. My kids. Swamp My kids. Age, buddies. They say they swamp donkeys. What Never, does that even mean? I have no idea. Never heard of it. Piss either. missile is still absolutely a thing, <laughs> yeah. but there's also such a thing. Piss missiles are like rockets. Bombs or swamp donkeys. Also, I said left center. That was dead center. My apologies. Uh, that, that piss dunk. missile from Bo Naylor was yeah. dead center. And I'll he tell you what, he had man. a freaking swamp donkey. I'll donkey. tell you what, <laughs> donkey, that was um, when you look at the bottom. When they won it in the tenth, right? The tenth or the eleventh? The tenth inning. Yeah. Why was I thinking the eleventh? So in the tenth inning, obviously in the top of the tenth, the White Sox took the lead, right? And in the bottom of the tenth, Jose's up first. You got Jimenez in second. It feels like. Okay, it's inevitable with Jimenez's speed, you're going to score. Yeah. But Ramirez makes it out and does not get Jimenez to third. And so that's a that's a tricky spot for Naylor. Yeah. Because he doesn't know, is this guy going to pitch around me? Is he going to put me on? Right. I don't know. And he that's a big at-bat. Because if he doesn't get the hit there, <laughs> I know they ended up doing more that inning. But I, don't, I think if, if, if Josh Naylor doesn't get a hit, after Ramirez makes the out in the 10th, I, I bet they lose the game. That Probably. was a big-time clutch hit by Naylor yeah. to tie it up, and then everybody else can relax because you know the game's tied. Can off I of, a question off of old buddy Brian Shaw. That's Well, that's where my question goes. Brian Shaw is in the White Sox. Yeah. And Cleveland fans have seen the Brian Shaw experience time after time. Oh, yeah. When he took the mound in the 10th with Jimenez on second, on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident were you the Guardians would not only just tie the game up but take the lead there? Because I was sitting at the Cavs game last night, and we could change the channels in the media section, and, and everyone's looking around like, oh, it's Brian Shaw? It's Brian Shaw? Oh, we're, we're fine. That's we're, we're crazy. I would never want to have that type of reputation. Oh, but yeah. he, no, I think, it's, I think <laughs> you're saying it was crazy that Mike actually went to the Cavs game yesterday. Why would he do that? Because <laughs> you need to cut that out. I mean, they're on watch. Because it was, I mean, you know, we'll get uh, to that later. Yeah, I, I, I thought that. Um, That's crazy. I thought that, that Shaw, I thought they'd beat Shaw. I don't know why they didn't walk Naylor in that situation. Who was up after him? I don't remember. Will Brennan. Yeah, I'm with you. That was a weird. Why would you like well, Naylor's so. the second most dangerous hitter on the Guardians? Yeah. I, honestly, right now he might be the most dangerous hitter on the Guardians, but he's the second at you worst. Set up a double play. Right, and I mean, and you know, and you set up a double play, and it's not like we well, say. I think a lot of teams don't want to do that because you put the winning run, run on, on base. base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and they eventually ran for Naylor, but like. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm more. Wor- I'm trying. If I'm the road team, I can't worry about the. I, I got to get that guy on second and not let him score. And I would way rather face Will Brennan with first and second than Josh Naylor with the runner on second. With the runner in scoring position. So I was surprised. I didn't like that move by the yeah, White Sox, but it worked for the Guardians. I so. also think. I think. Brian Shaw has had some magnificent implosions. Oh, he stinks. I don't think he stinks. Oh no, no, he stinks now. Well, yeah, but like I he think, was unfairly killed his yes, time here. Yes, that's where yeah, I was going. With it. I think the reputation was not fair to him. He had some memorable blow-ups. Oh, for sure. And that, yes. and and honestly, I get Dustin would kill him every I know, time. I he would kill him. Yep. He hated Shaw. Yep. Shaw for many years was a very good reliever yes. for the for the and he was durable and he was yes. reliable and in fact Zach and I talked to him yesterday yeah. before the implosion right. we talked to him before the game yeah. about his durability and about 
the way that he just yeah. goes about. You talked him up. All the arm injuries going right. on today and stuff like that. Yeah, he's uh, he's been, I mean, crazy durable. But at this point, I think he's, you know. You talked him up before a he, loss. Huh? As you, as, as he was the, in a great mood before the game. I didn't talk to him after the game. As, as the great Jason Lloyd would say, he's playing on three wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Ryan Shaw is playing on three wheels. Flat. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, that guy, he's not really good anymore. But, uh, <laughs> is the Yankees the next? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I love this series. I'm very excited about this series. And is Cookie starting it off? Uh, what Why is the problem? He played for the Mets. Yeah. What are you talking about? Carrasco? He played for the Mets last year, not the Yankees. No, 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 no. No, he's oh. saying, is he the first is he pitcher, the pitcher in the series? Starting the pitcher. Uh, yes. According to the ESPN He's next up. Kenzie will pitch in this series. It's Carrasco, McKenzie, and I don't know the – And Logan, Logan But I'm, for, the, for game one, right, the rotation right now, Carrasco's – Carrasco would be next. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Wait, the last two <laughs> games were like, Logan, <laughs> Allen, and Bybee. So, yes, it'll be – yes, it'll be McKenzie. Off day Thursday, so – Kenzie goes Saturday, I think, didn't he? They may have. Th- let me check. They, they moved have- that. The, when they're going to bring up that fifth starter either Monday or Tuesday. In oh Boston. yeah, I forgot about. So that. it's it's McKenzie, it's Carrasco, and it's. Uh, they may have announced the it's problem. It's listed Allen. as Logan Allen. And it's Logan Allen. Yeah, yeah, right. It's right because they only have four starters right now. That's what it is. That's what they did. Logan Allen's going to go Sunday, and then Monday they'll either go they'll either go Bybee Monday. Hope. And then have whoever they call up pitch Tuesday or vice versa. I hope McKenzie. How did Z- how did uh, I hope he has Zavion Curry do in the in? Yeah, he pitched twice. last night. I didn't see. Ben him Lively calls. pitched two nights ago. Went yeah. five and a third. He gave up a three run homer, and mm-hmm. only one strikeout. Yeah, I didn't see what uh, Curry did yesterday. I'm looking it up right now. By the way, I was talking about this. I don't know if you've paid attention. Have you seen what this Orioles AAA lineup has been doing? Zach and I were talking about it. It's insane. They're, it's, they're, it's, they scored it's a major league lineup. Odd. Yeah, well, they've, their OPS is like over 1,000. <laughs> now, they just called team. Matt Holiday up. Right. Uh, not uh, Matt Jackson. Holiday, Jackson Holiday. Yeah, yeah their, their farm system is oh filthy. God. Filthy. With your hitters. I mean, it's yeah. just insane. Yeah. They have, they they have like had, four or five guys there that should be playing in the big league. Or, the Orioles had a big comeback last year. Like, yeah, they did. They was, I thought they was going to look. Did you, was speaking of which, did you see one. the home run that um, one of their other young kids, the kid who plays second base, uh, West Curry Westberg. pitched four innings. He hit one over the monster like in center field. Oh, really? Basically. I didn't see that. Go ahead. Mike, Curry what? pitched four innings, five hits, one run, three walks, one strikeout. How many pitches? Uh, one, one strikeout, that's not great. Yes, Lively only had one strike out the day before. He yeah. threw 60 pitches. Okay. So it's probably going to either be Curry or Lively either Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, that's probably. And, and, and they'll, they've just moved everybody else up. But you'd rather have that guy start against the Red Sox than, than the Yankees. Yankees. Sure. Uh, what, who's pitching for the Yankees this weekend? I think Luis Gill. Yeah, uh, Clark Schmidt is yeah. scheduled to start against Cookie Carrasco. That could be high scoring. Luis Gill in the second matchup. And then if Logan Allen gets the start on Sunday, it is. he's scheduled to start Allen. against Nestor Cortez. Yeah, I mean, okay. the, the Yankees rotation is not great. The Yankees rotation is not great. Their bats have been excellent to start the season. Yep. The Yankees, I give them credit. I, I, you know, I picked them not to make the playoffs again this year. It's way, way early. But so far, they, you know, they, they swept the Astros. They took, uh, I think, two out of three. They might have swept the Arizona. took two out of three against Arizona. So they've already beaten a couple of good teams lately. They've been playing the Marlins, although they lost yesterday. But obviously, they got some really – you know, dangerous hitters who at the moment are healthy. I pick against them because I think they're an injury prone team and an old team. Yeah. But, you know, you got to deal with Judge, you got to deal with Soto, and you got to deal with Stanton right now. Volpe's been terrific. Volpe's, a, just moved you know, they're the one spot. of their few good young players. Yeah. And even Rizzo and, and Torres are pretty good. So their lineup's dangerous, and it'll be a good challenge for the Guardians pitchers. Absolutely. I'm but I to think see. the offense should continue to do well against the Yankees. I'm curious to see Tristan McKenzie against That's the what I want to see. Now McKenzie was a lot better in his second start. He didn't. He wasn't great. But he but was, the velocity but was up. They was let, he he. It wasn't a lot of swing and miss. The velocity was up a tick, but there yes. was not a lot of swing and miss. He had better command of his four seam. Right. We'll see. Like, but he averaged. I think the first start he was like ninety point four, and this one was ninety one point three or something. Tick. It was up a tick. So that was at least listen. And that's good. You take that's it. That's good. You take you it. Take it. And, but but yes. you're going from the White Sox to the Yankees, and woo. yeah, you make a mistake against. Soto or Judge he or good. Stanton, it's a problem. It's going to be his best game. Six strikeouts. I hope you're right. Now. I mean, they need them. Six they strikeouts. They, they really they need I got them. your back, Tristan. Six strikeouts. They need Bybee and Yankees. McKenzie to be great. We Book had it. Put Zach. me on camp. Six strikeouts. Mm. Take the over. Zach and Fan I. Fan duel. Take I, the over I, whenever I, he pitched. I'll give you a little bit of a tease. Zach yeah. and I had a tremendous conversation with Tristan. 
Oh, he's the best. About he? everything going on with him right now. Yeah. It'll run next week. Check it out in the athletic. It's it'll be really good. Great. This tease. is a. Yeah, we, he, you're he getting was, good at great. this. He was great. It's a good team. He I was know very he's, vulnerable. He was very vulnerable. I know we say this about the Cavs a lot, and then we, you know, we're like, who cares because they're soft. The Guardians, like the Cavs, have a lot of nice guys. Yeah. But they're not soft like the Cavs, I don't think. Dude, what's wrong with you? The Cavs are soft. That, that, Is that I, new news? I've been meaning to ask you. Yes, please. I, all of the hashtags of Cleveland sports, which one do you actually, like, agree with? For the I land, like, let them know. I like for the land. What about let them know? Let them know is awful. It was the Browns. Dog pound? Hashtag dog pound. No, I don't like that. And my problem Why with that not? One, here's my problem <laughs> with that one. The dog pound is dead. Thank you. <laughs> and Thank the you. idiot... The idiot son-in-law of the team wow. refers to everybody as the dog pound, and Browns fans should know better. He's a fraud, the son-in-law. So, so let, when they build this dome, should they actually, like... You can't... It has to happen organically. Yes, he's right. The dog pound died when they knocked down that crap hole of an old stadium. But it was our crap hole. I was having that conversation. <laughs> look, look, <laughs> It was a crap hole, but it right. was our crap hole. Didn't, they right. have, didn't the owners used to park their cars out there on the field? On the field? On the, the field. Stadium? I swear I seen like an old clip. Who, who was, what was we I watching? mean, I went to a monster truck show there once when <laughs> yeah, I was Jason, a kid. Jason, imagine running the sweep on third and three and a Cadillac comes out of nowhere. <laughs> who was <laughs> we you out? Oh, you're it right. Was, uh, I don't know. If it, it was, was Leroy, the, I there think. Were cars, Leroy was there were cars show. parked on there. You're right. There was an old <laughs> clip of like the 70s. I don't know whose cars oh, they man. were. But yeah, that's why would the owner one. park his car on the field? He had a caddy. Yeah, there, but there <laughs> were cars parked behind the end behind zone. Behind zone, yeah. in, a clip, <laughs> in a clip that went around like within the last year. I remember. I feel like I remember a video. I don't know if it was here, but of somebody like a player having to like hop over a car on the field. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like he ran off the sidelines. He was like, <laughs> as if the fact that they put the goalposts in the middle of the right. end zone wasn't bad enough. That was, now no, they have was, an Oldsmobile. No, it was on the goal line, the goalpost. Well, yeah, that's what they I mean. Must, yeah, like, okay. In the field of they play. Must, that is crazy that that was the they game. They really yeah. trusted to when pick did they back? change that? I can't. Do we know what year that happened? That the goalpost. Goal like when technology <laughs> became where you could build an arc. Why would you do that? Why would you put the goalpost in front of the end zone? Because That's what it was for years. You know what, though? When I played uh, in the CFL, I think it's like that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I think still, it is. Don't they have bigger end zones in the CFL? They got a wider field. Yeah, a wider field. Like, yeah. And a longer. It's yeah. five yards longer. They got a center line. It's is 50, it five yards yeah. longer? I, yeah. know it's wi- I know it's wider because you can feel it when you check in a seven cut, a corner route. Oh, my yeah. God, you're running Wouldn't, for days. I'm surprised the NFL hasn't made the field bigger. Wouldn't that make offense even better? No. Why would you want that? <laughs> We already, the as NFL, a defender, I'm already ticked off about the I know the that, Simon, but doesn't the NFL do everything to make offense better? Isn't that like Clear, do? Clearly, we can't okay. hit drop tackle. And would a bigger, anymore. would a Canadian Football league size field make offense even better? This is what I'll tell you. If the CFL yeah. paid as much as the NFL, more players would go to the CFL. Why is that? Because it's just better. What is better about it? Just the whole the weather the, sucks. No, I don't talk about the weather. Mm. Just the, the 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 play. You know, it's three downs instead of four. Oh, really? So that means that they're passing on the, all usually all the time. Right. If you're a DB and a wide receiver and a quarterback, the CFL is kind of where so you. Like, but they don't. They just don't pay them. It's the kind of like the arena league with a giant field. Yeah. Well, you don't run the ball. Yeah. Mm. Uh, CFL is sixty-five yards wide. And how long? And how wide is the NFL? Fifty-three and a third. 50. Wow, that's a huge difference. Yeah. No, I just told you. I know. I, t- I checked the seven round. I was running forever. I was like, "Good night." Trying to get up under that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's 110 yards. And long. it's an extra player on the field. Thomas was like, "I'm not chasing Pierre that far." Yeah, Jock. <laughs> extra player, Antoine? extra player on the field. That's the that was the wildest thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you and Dom personnel all the yeah. time. You How know? many Americans play in the CFL? Yeah. Isn't there a limit? Or yeah, is that just you, like Japanese you gotta, baseball. Yeah, is it seven? I think it's seven on the field at one. Seven day? Americans or seven non-Canadians? I guess what else would it be? I guess. Yeah, you know, seven like non-Canadians. Uh, I think it's seven. Football seven. in Bali. Yeah, I think you got to have four Canadians on the field. I Boy, that's it. racist. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> let, the less, let the best people play. None of those CFL records matter oh, if you don't have five. Americans out there. I that's can't right. remember. Is either seven? You, is either you got to have seven Canadians? On each play, you mean? Yeah. Oh. Like on weird. offense, on your starting defense, so, you'll have to have So there's seven. a ref counting Canadians? <laughs> you have your flag on your How does hat? the ref know who's a Canadian and who's an American? <laughs> no wonder this looks so jacked up. Well, they did it to make it 
Canadian but football. But how do the refs know? It, I can well, understand. I mean, what do you mean, how do they know? But I can understand that, like, <laughs> you, you have to you have a certain got, amount of players on the roster. You got no, a green it's, card soda. on your It's that too, but <laughs> on the field, on the starting defense, I believe you got to have seven Canadian you wear a players. wear letter if you're Canadian? <laughs> like, oh, no. What is this, Salem Witch Trials here? <laughs> This is incredible. Oh I, did, I never knew that. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, we, got, we got 10 minutes where we bring in Hayden Grove here, so let's talk a little Cavs. By but the first, way, before we talk about Cavs, well, when I start it's about read, Hayden Grove. When I start a read, you got to let me get the read I'm in. sorry. Bad job out of me. But look, you then go let first. Me, yes. Look, pretend you haven't started it yet, so this way it won't be interrupted. <laughs> go. All right? You and, uh, you and uh, Earl the Pearl can pipe down right now. We're trying to get paid. <laughs> what's, what's, uh, what's on your mind? I think we should put a poll real quick <laughs> in the chat. If they want Hayden Grove to sing on the show, Hayden can, can sing. Can we force Hayden? You didn't know. That's what he does, man. He's a singer. Can we put that poll up? And we, we will force Hayden to sing if, if people want him to sing. All right, the poll is up. All now right, let, now let, I will shut up read. while you do your read. Okay. eBay Motors is a proud sponsor of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Passion, drive, and patience. That's the winning formula for championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. The Cavs beat the Memphis G League team last night, but most importantly, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell looked as healthy as we have seen him since his knee injury he suffered right before or right after the All-Star break. Yeah. And being there in person, it was pretty noticeable the difference in how Donovan's lateral quickness was back. His vertical ability and explosiveness still is a little lacking, but it was good to see him healthy and at least resembling the former Donovan Mitchell we had seen prior to the injury. The, the game itself, like I said, it was the Memphis G League team, but Tyvis, what'd you take away from Donovan? How'd you think he looked? Well, the, the first night? thing I took away was he need to he need to let that mass thing go. I mean, I always knew that it was going to take him a while to adjust. And it's just that mask, it, it really blocks your vision and stuff, what you want to do. So him getting rid of the mask made him better um, from that standpoint. But I seen a guy who, I'm not going to say he was quite as explosive as he used to be, but you could tell that when he dribbled the ball and he got low, he could make more moves. He was able to go behind his back. But I, as far as getting to the hold and dunking, like I don't think he's there. But I think right now he's trying to figure out, he's figuring, like, I'm not going to be 100% for the playoffs, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to be effective. And last night, yes, it was the Memphis Grizzly, but he at least showed you, like, I can still do some things. I mean, I think he shot 50% from Trey. I think he was 5 for 10 from Trey, had 28, 29 points, still was able to get, hit some dimes. So I like what I've seen from him. Um, obviously, you can't really take a lot from the rest of the team because it's the Grizzlies and they're terrible. But... From Donovan's performance, I like that. If he can do that, he needs to get a little bit more healthier because he's gonna be a, he's gotta go to the hold in the playoffs. But hey, it's a good performance by him. Guys, the Cavs have two games left on the season. Uh, I think the Bucks have the tiebreaker over the Cavs, so the, the Cavs cannot end up as high as the two. But I think they I believe, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, that they could still, with two games to go, finish as high as the three and as low as the seven. I believe it's low as six. I think it's seven because on the standing sheet, it has an X next to the Bucks and Knicks, which means they have clinched a playoff spot. It means they can't fall into the play-in, and I'm not seeing that next to the Cavs. I thought X was the div- – uh, no, you're right. X is playoff spot. So, um, be- because – doesn't Philly have the tiebreaker over the Cavs? Probably. I think. They, I think they I don't do. remember. I think I, I think, so I think they can finish as low as the seven. Now, they probably won't because they're the playing bad teams. The season series is tied 2-2, so <clears throat> I have to go to the next tiebreaker. Yeah, I, well, either way, it, they certainly can finish as low as the six and maybe the seven. It's still wide open there. They, they have to win Friday. At the moment, I'm about to say Friday is a must-win game. game. Who do you want to play right now in the first round that gives you any chance? With Donovan looking a little better, 
Uh, I mean, I got. I don't think anybody has any faith in this team, but Indeed. who do you want them to play? Well, either Pacers the Magic or, or the Pacers. Yeah, the Pacers or Magic. Pacers are, Magic had a bad loss the other night. They lost to Milwaukee, la- right? Last, last night, night without Milwaukee. Giannis. Yeah. With no Giannis, they still lost. So I think they lost pretty bad, I mean, too. This is a hard team to watch right now. This is Ugh, a, that was a trash brutal. half. It was a trash first half. <laughs> they were a trash team. I mean, they're, I, I just can't watch them. And it's because, the, I don't, the Donovan thing was weird. It's The whole thing's been weird. This yeah. whole... All of this has just been really weird. It's telling. Glad he played better last night, but it's it's really it's hard to just stomach their games right now. Like, it is. I just I just get angry watching this. Yes, team. they should be you so much watch. better than what they are. Yeah, and I'm just kind of disgusted with the whole thing and done with them, frankly. Yes, like wow, I'll, I really am. That's where you are. That was such a trash first half. You're playing a team missing twelve <laughs> dudes with they was no down, reason to they? even be there, and you're down. Like that's trash. They pulled it together. This, they ran away care. with it. In they the should never hand. be in that position. They should Bull, never I, be in I that position. I got a game for you. Yes. And Jason, I know you watch. This is specifically God, for Bull. Jason. I'm gonna give you names. You tell me if this player played for the Grizzlies last night, or if I'm making up the name, just pulling it out of my ass. All right, because I'm not gonna lie. I always keep it real. You did not watch. Well, you watched, 99.9% of the time I keep it real. You watched. Uh, but, the, you watched the Guardians instead. Uh, yeah, I was not watching the Cavaliers last night. <laughs> and I will not watch their last two games. Obviously, I'll watch the playoffs. You, you ain't going to watch this. This is a big game Friday. No, no. It's only for seeding. You could, I could hear about it after. I'm not going to lie. So, I did not watch. I, don't, I probably couldn't name, when they were healthy, <laughs> more than two players on Memphis. Since they're not healthy Jackson, and they're playing all G League guys, I probably won't know. So, I'll probably be guessing. But go ahead. I'll be honest. Jake Laveria. So, you, some of these names you're going to make up. I'm going to make up a couple. Some of these are real. Okay. Jake Laveria. Jake Laveria. <laughs> Jake Laveria. It sounds like a white guy name. <laughs> and so a white guy is less likely to be in the NBA. <laughs> I don't. But the G League might have a higher percentage of white guys than the NBA. And there's a lot of G League guys playing. You're going to look inside I'm still going to say it's made right up. Now. That's a made up name. Jake Laravia had 32 points. Was 8 of 11 from 3 last night. You're kidding. The leading scorer in the game. <laughs> Uh, next up. Who is this guy? Uh, have you ever heard, heard, you ever heard, heard of him before? I've never heard of him. I've never heard of him before. Nobody. Okay. Wow. He was a 2022 That shows you how, a, like, why the NBA is kind of a joke. Because uh, some up. slappy that nobody ever heard of can come off and score 32 points. Xavier, or is that just an indictment on how awful the Cavs are? Next up. Next. Xavier Simpson. Oh, he's real. He is real. Played in Michigan. Uh, I guess, by the way. I Jack was White. I was confident against Go ahead. Jack White. No, that's made up. Jack White played 15 minutes last night. Like four <laughs> rebounds, one assist, one steal. And Jack White is black. Is that true? No, Jack White is a white guy from Duke. Okay, this is crazy this because is usually crazy. guys with the last name White are black, black and guys with the last name Black are white. This doesn't fit the narrative. Incredible. Go ahead. G.G. Jackson. That's made up. Gigi Jackson scored 22 points last night, was 7 to 21 from the floor, had two rebounds, two assists, two steals. I thought that was some guy that plays uh, trumpet behind Hayden Grove. I don't know. Jeez. Uh, Trey Jemison. That's real. I've heard of him. You've heard of Trey Jemison? <laughs> <laughs> Trey Jemison is real. He's a undrafted rookie from UAB. I have not heard of him. By the way. I was making that up. And last up. You didn't make up any so far. This one's got to be made up, though. Well, you've heard of Lamar Stevens. I have. He played for the Cavs. I remember him. There you go. Well, there Scotty you, go. You, were, you were two for four on the ones that didn't Junior. play. Yeah. Those were all the guys who actually played. I'm not even going to make one up. All right. I, I didn't have to make up names. But I'd never heard of any of those guys. No. But I had you heard of any of those guys? Uh, Gigi Jackson was a highly touted prospect out of South Carolina. Scotty Pippen. But other than that, not. They have I mean, Scotty Pippen. Get on their team? No. To Jason's point, though, that first half was as bad as it could have possibly got. Donovan was the only bright spot in the first half. They pulled it together. Kudos yeah. to them for almost covering. It was a much better second Why half. Why would you Donovan give them kudos? Good. Yeah, I give them nothing. Well, they, they pulled it together <laughs> yeah. late. Kudos. I give them nothing. More, <laughs> it was more Memphis. What if they, they right beat the gas, five of us again. last night. Congratulations. What yeah, they, right. What if, they, five of us. what if they flipped the switch? And like turn it on in the play. They flip the switch, they're going to electrocute themselves. Right Do you now. guys, if you had to bet right now, Dang. let's say they play. Let's say they play Orlando or Indiana. Would you bet them to win that series? Yes. Or? Those two teams? Yes. Yes. You have faith that they're going to play well enough even against those Indiana, two teams? Mike and I talked about on the podcast. Indiana plays fast and they can score a lot of points. Uh, but Mike, I, are you picking them? I don't trust them. I picked the Cavs over Indiana, yeah. What about Orlando? 
I just think about it. As bad as they've played, you think they have the ability think, to flip I it? I think yeah. they beat Orlando. Because, again, it's about progression Any, in right. the NBA. Anybody else? Orlando hasn't been there. The Cavs have. Those two teams, I'll pick the Cavs. Anybody else? It's what's Okay. Orlando's in the second, a wonky matchup, though. Orlando's in the wonky. second round, what is more likely? Cavs w- lose to the Celtics four games to one? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Cavs win the series against the Celtics, or the Cavs lose all four to the Celtics by 25 or more points, more likely. They're not losing by 25 four games in a row. You have to pick one. The I Cavs win or the – This Cavs. is like Mike's – You said – You said the, Chris, neither is going to So either the Cavs beat the Celtics or they lose. They get swept and lose by 25. 25 or more points. They game. win. Actually, I would probably agree with that. That they would win because I have no faith in Joe Mazzula as a head coach. Oh, wow! Yeah, they, they, they find a way to. Not but against the Cavs, the, the yeah. Cavs are talented. That's why they're so angry watching them. <laughs> mm. They should be so much better than what they are. Yeah, they are. Let's they bring should. Hayden on. Where's we're going to bring Hayden in here. We're going to change topics and Where's we're going to have a, a fun game to play with Price Hayden to in a sec. You got to pee. That's if what we you do. guys have not oh, already subscribed. Make sure you hit the subscription button. Hit the subscribe button. It costs zero dollars and zero cents. Totally free. It helps us get to our goal of forty thousand by our two-year hey, anniversary. Are you going to sing? Coming up next month. Also, hit the like button. Make sure you check out the ultimate shows. And once Hayden's plugged in, we will welcome Hayden Grove to the show. What's up, Hayden? I can talk over Mike if he's doing. A <coughs> we can't talk when he's doing a commercial. Yes. That's, that's the right. Oh, if Mike talks, I I am polite enough to just I shut up. I appreciate that, Jason. I, I, you are you not. Doing? Well. In fairness, <laughs> let's be honest. Most days, I'm better than Jay in terms of shutting up during those commercials. But today, Most I've days. had a rough one. I've had an off day. Hayden, how you doing, buddy? What's up, guys? How we doing? Are you going to sing? Will you be willing to sing? If you want me to, I will. I, we asked a we poll. Put a poll. We put a poll up. Oh, you put Fans a poll up. Great. Great. I'm sure, they, I'm sure the answer is no. I want no. you to sing. I'm sure the answer is no. You don't know. need to warm up? You sit. You yeah, you a little sing. bit. Um, no, I don't need to warm up. I'm Look okay. Look at that. Yeah, roll out of bed. Yeah, you can roll out of bed. Jeans. Yeah, so you can. So yeah, like karaoke now. You got like a go-to song? Uh, no. I usually, yeah, I usually do don't. Karaoke. I usually don't do karaoke. I just look, kind of watch. Peasants. No, it's not for peasants. I just. <laughs> he gets paid to you sing. Just, you just, yeah, sing. Yeah, you just sing. Yeah, yeah. He's paid to sing. I had no idea. You let everybody. Oh, just, okay. <laughs> you let everybody else have fun. You know, do it. Like I get to do it all the time. They, that's yeah. their moment. So I just drink and have fun. So you love singing more than sports, right? Or no? Very equal. I've always loved both. I've always done both. So, um, yeah, I love both. Why did Very you never equally. tell me you, you can sing? I don't know, man. It's I not the first thing that How comes out of my know? mouth. How do you I see don't him. You follow him on Twitter? Yes. I mean, he tweets about his gigs and stuff. Does he? Yeah, he puts out a schedule there. <laughs> yeah. My fault. I, I try not to do too much on Twitter because Twitter is like the sports place. But like Instagram, see? TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Instagram, TikTok, that kind of stuff. That's where I focus on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you're on Instagram, aren't you? I am on Instagram. I don't follow him. Oh, oh. That, well, there, that's the problem. Well, I, didn't know, I didn't know he was on Instagram. Yeah, Everybody's know. on Instagram. I, yeah. That's stuff. I'm not on Snapchat. I don't have it's, Snapchat. No, no yeah, Snapchat. I thought that's for like 20 year olds. Is yeah, it, Snapchat it is. For yeah. yeah. Instagram is. My no. kids want Snapchat. I keep telling them. No. I don't do it. No. Yeah, I yeah. fight my daughter over it. It's so, like, no. They, my, they don't know. They don't need I, it. I, that, I won't let them on TikTok. I won't let them on Snapchat. No, my son doesn't have it. But they don't live some, on Instagram. Some little girl asked my son if he's on Snapchat. No. And he, he didn't even know what it was. No. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Keep it that no. way. She was older, older woman. Oh, older coming, after, coming Ooh, after your Cougar. boy. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Good for him. In college, what was that? Snapchat. Did guy. you say older woman? She's 13. Well, he's 11. Yeah. Right? Not even. <laughs> right. Still 10. In college, hey. Robinson. <laughs> Snapchat got popular when I was in college. He's doing something right. Let's yeah. just say that I got some crazy stuff. No, boy. Oh, I got. I had well, we know it. about so, you, Jason. So I got no, rid of that. I got, I got crazy stuff in my email from athletes sending <laughs> snaps to people who wanted me to write about it. Yeah. Who uh, played professionally in this town. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's, man, that could be another book. <laughs> that would be Are a, you ever going to get, 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 write a book when you like done with everything? He wrote a book. Yeah, I did write a yeah. book. It about broke me. I don't know if I got another one in there or not. He oh, gets, we do have some crazy tales to tell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh, get, yeah. Like the one you told me that I was in there cr- laughing and crying about on Tuesday. Oh, God. Jason's got a good story every day. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the stories that, you know, that he knows, yeah, you'd probably get sued if you. If you probably. Yeah, you'd, you'd, be, right. you'd be in big trouble. Well, could you? Be, I mean, if they're true, you couldn't get sued. I don't know. I don't know. I told you, we may have some. 
when LeBron retires, there may be some oh, there yeah. may be some stuff. We'll see. Can David Griffin be in there? <laughs> <laughs> he might. Yeah. He might. Well, we brought we brought Hayden in for two things today. Yeah. And we're gonna play a very fun game with Hayden in about fifteen minutes. Mm. But first, I wanted Hayden to come in. He covers all three sports in the city of Cleveland for Cleveland.com. Does a great job on their digital platforms. So I wanted to go a all encompassing topic here. And Hayden, I'll start with you, then we can discuss. Which athlete, one name, is the face of Cleveland sports right now? Who's the guy <coughs> in Cleveland at the moment? So I'll preface this by saying we were, I was covering the Final Four, and Caitlin Clark was answering all kinds of questions about everything. And she said, oh, LeBron James is the face of Cleveland. And I was like, oh, well, what are you like? I put it out there on Twitter, like, yeah. who's the face of Cleveland? Like, be it. You know, sports or otherwise, and the answers were hilarious. Like, Super Pimp was on there, and and uh, uh, Tim Misney was on there. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, That's like, I mean, like, he I'm is the Elk and Elk guy with the, the Elk and Elk guy. He's got, like, that guy's got the Trump haircut. Yes, the that South guy. Park Mall guy. Yeah. Do you know who the South Park Mall guy is? You ever I seen don't that know guy? Him. He has like the light up pants. He has like a belt. At a, maybe, maybe one of you guys can pull him up. Anyway, so that's how it kind of came about. Yeah. I was thinking about it when he asked me. I, I, I think it's got to be Miles Garrett, right? I, I think like. It used to be LeBron, obviously. Maybe at one point you could have ar- argued Lindor, maybe, like 2018, 2019. I think it was him briefly. Yeah. I think it's still LeBron. In 2018, LeBron. And then Lindor, I don't yeah, know. Like after LeBron left, like 2019 I area. think it was Lindor when the All-Star game was here. Yeah. Like he was the ambassador for the city. Yeah, like 2019. That was 2019. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Maybe for right. 20 minutes. But I think right now, if you're talking only sports, I think Miles Garrett's got to be the guy, right? Like, I, I would argue with Jason, like, it's still LeBron. Like, yeah. Yeah. But if you're talking about athletes that are still here right now in the city, I would say it's probably Miles. It's probably Miles. It, it, yeah. I, I, Nick, if he didn't get if hurt. Nick hadn't got hurt, it would be yeah. Nick. Yeah. Jose doesn't yeah. talk much. Yeah. Right. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. So if I, Jose put himself the Cavs, out there more. And Donovan Mitchell's not committed to the city right yeah. now. It, so. Now, if Donovan Mitchell signed an extension, yeah. it's still it, Miles. It's it, Brownstown. But, yeah. I agree it's with that, Miles. too. It was LeBron. But he, he brought yeah, a championship. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a generational. I mean, in the, who was it in the 90s? Wasn't it somebody on the, on the Indians at the time? In the ni- well, the 90s was a different era. Man. Yeah. The Browns weren't even here for half of the 90s. <laughs> Mark, Not half. Mark Three, yeah. Three years. Four. <laughs> it was Mark And by, they might as well count 95, too. Okay, because so they four with they, 95. Yeah, 95, 96, 97, 98. That's four. You could probably say Albert Bell, like... 95, oh, Albert Tommy. Bell. Tom, oh, Tommy didn't really get, like, hit his stride to, like, the 97, Bell, 98. Bell, Kenny Lofton. Bell and LeBron are the two athletes in Cleveland that went from the most beloved to the most despised. Yeah, like that. Like that. I mean, it was yeah. because they LeBron loved them. Loved again. Because yeah. they loved them so much, they then hated them so much. Yeah. And then LeBron, although some people still never came back around on LeBron, which is What about Kyrie? Fascinating. He went from loved to hated. He, yeah. And he might be back in like a middle ground. He's never loved like those other guys. No, no, that's true. I, love, I actually I love feel Kyrie. like there's nobody right now. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Miles Garrett is not like a superstar. Like he's not a guy. He's a superstar, but like he's not a s- he's celebrity. A he's not a. He's not a celebrity. <laughs> he's he's a star, but he's not like yeah. a celebrity. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna be a face of a city, you're gonna be a star. Like LeBron is a celebrity. Uh, Francis Galindo, I guess, could kind of be a celebrity. I don't it know. It would be Watson if he it plays sh- well. That's true right. too. Should like be, he, he'd take it easily. But it yeah. should be the quarterback, but I don't know if it'll. If, if, you're right. If he plays well and they win, but it, I still think not that well. He's got to play like a super. Like, yeah. yeah, great. Because there's Beyond. a lot of people that want nothing to do. They with go him. to the playoffs and win two playoff games because of him. Yeah, yeah they will say it'll Baker turn. who. There'll still it'll be turn. a percentage of the fan base that will never no, come around. No, yeah, they will say Baker who. Well, they already say that. You could argue. They don't. You could argue. No, they don't. No, you, no, you, yeah, do. you could I'm argue. Just kidding, there's man. a small Hayden section. Hayden loves, ba- Hayden loves <laughs> Baker. There's, Baker, there's bro. a small yeah. section of people. Jay still loves Baker. There's a small section of people who still. It love ain't Baker. a small like the section. The vast majority of the yeah. city has moved on. Go ahead. It, I, you could argue that for like three months, Joe Flacco was the face of Cleveland. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah, like true. I mean, for he for his little stint there, I mean, Flacco fever was everywhere. I mean, if that if that doesn't sum up Cleveland being a Brownstown, yeah, that yeah. And for town, those, if you said in November and does, December, does he get? Uh, it's Joe Flacco. Does he no get doubt. money from them shirts? Probably yeah. the the where I'm from. Some of them. <laughs> the, the, the where I'm from ones he if probably he's, does. If he's got to deal with the yeah. company. Yeah. Flacco yeah. fever. Yeah. Nobody. He, wow. But to to your point, Adam, is like if Cle- it's not only that Cleveland's a brownstone. Cleveland's a town that is starved for a quarterback. Starved. Of course. Yeah. That's why. That's why Baker was so beloved because he sure. at least for a little bit played. Joe Flacco comes in, plays well. Like if Deshaun Watson does that, 
I, he might have a little less because of all the baggage, but he's still going to be beloved in this town. If he 100%. can bring, if he can win, and he can bring them victories, and he can, you know, spark a playoff run, he'll he'll be beloved. And his upside is higher than any quarterback yeah. the Browns have ever had, frankly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean that that could happen, and Nick Chubb could get it back. I would have definitely said Nick Chubb before the injury. Yeah, but I feel like he missed the whole season basically. Yeah. I can't, he can't be the and, face right now. And even and even Nick Chubb, no no offense to him, but he's just quiet. He's so he is, quiet. He's not. But he's so beloved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's yeah beyond beloved. If you yeah. ask the fans. What, who's your favorite player in Cleveland? Nick Chubb. He would win. Nick Chubb. Yeah. He would win. There's no doubt. I mean, there's, there's literally nothing not likable about him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, just it's, hard you know, worker, so talented, yeah. you know, gritty, you know, just that kind of. And, and you know what it is about Nick Chubb, too? And this may totally be nonsense. It feels like he doesn't care about the money like other guys do. Not as evidenced by today. You could argue that. Yeah. Yeah. Blasphemy. <laughs> you can <think that's, laughs> <that's> focus. <laughs> Excuse me. I wouldn't go that far. Excuse me. It yeah. feels, I'm not saying, I, I started that by saying it may absolutely not be true. <laughs> I'm not saying he doesn't care about the money at all. Tyvis, what percentage of people care about the money? What percentage it's of players care about the money? 100%. Not 99%? 100%. 100%. Oh, yeah. They got a Wait finite a window hold on, hold of on. winning. But, but you're, not every player is going to take every last dollar to you know, you, there are some players that take a little less to go places. It happens. Yes, I agree with that statement. But it, it, the trade, oh, the trade off better be a Super Bowl. Listen, I was a young rookie, and I had this player tell me the money gonna make me leave every time that's because exactly these right. owners right. is getting paid off that, of us. Exactly. I, I don't disagree. And I don't and care where got it a is. Small the amount money of time. is making disagree. me go every yeah, maximize time. Maximize your earnings. By the way, Tyvis <laughs> just said something that drives me crazy when I hear this. Because they say it on broadcast all the time, it drives me nuts. It's a pet peeve, a young rookie. Is there? Yeah. All, I mean, except for Brandon, Brandon Whedon, Whedon, there's no such thing as an old rookie. Well, every now and then, young, yeah, and, ba- and basically baseball sometimes. Cause you got a guy will come up from yeah, like you know Triple A, and he's you know twenty. Who is that dude? For I just saw this clip. It was like the six year anniversary. The guy from the Lakers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ingram. I yeah. literally just watched yeah, that yeah. a second ago. Yeah. What's his Ingram. name? Andre Ingram. Remember that? Yeah. Thirty-two like, years old. As a rookie, right. he was yeah. what? Out of his mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was Didn't a, he have like one? Oh like yeah, yeah. 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 I know you're eight talking threes. about. Like this slappy threes. from Memphis who scored thirty-five and I didn't even know he was a real player. <laughs> 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 the only reason I knew those answered the questions because I went through like the box score last yeah. night. But he was asking him like, he's, he's not. He's going to give the whole list of players that are real. Yeah. Like he's and you hadn't. I mean, no. The only guy. The only guy I'd heard of was the guy. Played for the Cavs. Yeah, yeah, Lamar Jackson. Right, that's it. All right, Mike. What's your next question? Go ahead. Uh, well, I just want to get Hayden's thoughts before we play this game on yeah. the nine and three start for the Guardians. I know you were there last night, Hayden. Uh, impressive. Are you fully buying into this start for Stephen Vogt and this hot hitting Guardians offense? It 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 goes back last night. It, this is the best start since two thousand and three or two thousand two. And I remember specifically that two thousand two season. They started on the West Coast. They were eleven and one. Like they and that was after they kind of unloaded everybody and they were eleven and one and Ellis Burks was hitting four home runs and like Jim Tomey was still part of the team, and then they ended up firing Crazy. Charlie Manuel, Manuel and everything went to crap. So mm. the answer is no, I'm not completely bought in. But there are some good things. I mean, you like to see um, the team fighting. The bullpen's been great. The starting pitching's been relatively good. Um, you know, they've been able to find ways to to score runs, but yeah. they have played Oakland. Who's you know hasn't won a lot. White Sox are two and ten at this yeah, point. They're terrible. So I mean, you got to take it with a little bit of but grain Seattle's of salt. But Seattle's a, yeah. a good team. Yeah. The Twins should be a decent team. They're yeah. playing poorly. Yeah. But I, I, you know, what's funny though is, you say their pitching has been relatively good, but their their starting has actually been the, of the three parts. Yeah, it's, it's been, been worse. Worst yeah, for sure, for sure. And you would have thought for them to get off to a good start. They had to have great starting pitching. Right. And outside of Bieber, they really haven't. No, I mean, they haven't gone long either. They've been no. pretty relatively short yeah. outings. I mean, Shane went six in both of his starts, but, like, Bobby last night was only four and two-thirds. Like, but the bullpen, they, they, were, they were loving the bullpen last night. Well, they and got, like, I mean, uh, what's his name? Well, Hunter Gaddis is obviously Ga- been Gaddis has been great. And the, what's his name? The journeyman who pitched. Beattie. Beattie's been yeah, great. Yeah, Beattie has Beattie's been, been fantastic. Great. Yep. Beattie's been great. He's an older guy, too, but he yeah. seems to have found it. Uh, Barlow has not been great, He's which been is, around. yeah. So that was, as Mike said yesterday, that's their yeah. biggest acquisition of the offseason. Yeah. And million. I think Enyel, De Los Santos has pitched pretty well, De if I remember Santos. correctly. Yeah, I mean, he's been good. I didn't so, understand that trade. You can't, you can't buy in too, too much yet, but you can appreciate that they're playing well, they're playing hard. Like, vote, it seems like Vote seems to be putting all, pushing all the right buttons. Like, he's not, you know, um, too 
heavy on veterans playing all the time and this and that, kind of like, you know, Tito yeah. might have been. So Well, I loved that they sent Straw down. That was, yeah. To me, that was eye-opening difference. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that happens if Tito's still here. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. But it, they need offense, and yeah. they, they know that. Like, right. They you can be the best defensive team in baseball and not win. I mean, it's just you need offense. Right, right. I mean, kind of like the Cavs. The Cavs touted all this defense, and then they went out and, you know, signed some offensive guys, but still, it's not enough. No. Do you, you know, have any they, faith in them in the playoffs? No. No. <laughs> I don't. Not even against Orlando or Indiana? I, yeah, I think, th- I mean, they could. But the problem is, I just don't, for me, Darius has been just all over the place, and it's it's not trending upward. Evan no. Mobley is not trending upward. No. You're relying on on Donovan and Jared Allen. Jared Allen, we've all seen what happens when he can really bang against the big guy. Mm, yeah. um, it, it's tough. It is. It's tough. So I hope things change because obviously a playoff run in this town would be awesome. Yeah. But um, but I just I don't have faith, and they can certainly prove me wrong. All right, real quick, guys, before we play Mike's game here. Uh, if you had to pick one team in the East to beat the Celtics, who are you picking? Milwaukee Bucks. They're not playing well right now. They could flip the switch. Miami. Miami. Miami seems to always have it, right? They seem to always figure it out in the playoffs. But I think the Knicks, I mean, without Randall, that'd be tough. But they're a tough team, too. Yeah, I'd say probably the Bucks or the Heat. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, one of, one of the, out of all the other teams, one of them got the greatest player to ever dribble a basketball, so. That's not true. Wait it's a minute. hurt. You yeah, think Giannis wait. is the greatest player. You think Giannis ever. is the greatest of all time? Prove He's out wrong. of his mind. Who? <laughs> he also thinks Philip Walker is I'd have to think about it for a minute. Prove but like, yourself right. Prove me wrong. What has he done better yeah. than LeBron? Uh, one defensive player of the year, uh, two MVPs, a, a four. championship. Four MVPs. This is all. But LeBron, could have, LeBron could have won MVP like eight times. Ah, he should have. Eight. We don't live. Yeah, 12, right. I don't. I don't live in the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. I don't live in that. So I guess you think. So, but, so you think Steve Nash is a better basketball player than Kobe Bryant? Then, right? Why? Because he got an MVP. He's got more MVPs than. Yeah, no, Kobe. see, that's blasphemy because Kobe should have got his. Oh, well, right. you just said, yeah, exactly. You should have. I said. You just said. I said. I did say that. <laughs> 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 right, I'm going to save Tyvis and we're going to play a little Go bit. Go ahead, Mike. What do we got? So, Hayden. Yep. We can't do this without someone new to the panel because what I've done is I've taken some quotes throughout the last eight, nine, ten months of UCSS. Oh, I love this. <laughs> and we're going to have to put you to the test to see if you can attribute which quote to which UCSS panel member. Now, okay. it's not just included to the three here. Okay, Jay. It could be Jay. It could be anyone who's ever been on the show who's like a consistent part of the show. Jay, G. Bush. G. Bush. Jay, G. Bush. Myself. Yeah. Earl. No Brad and, and Mike, though. Maybe. Okay, maybe Brad. Maybe. Okay. I mean, they haven't been on the show in a while. There might be one sprinkled in. Okay. okay. There. So I just have to try to attribute. You try to attribute said quote. All right. Do you think we will get them all right? Uh, we're going to let Hayden guess, then before Obvious. we reveal it, you guys are going to guess okay, as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. Some cool. of these are more recent. Some of these are a little further back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's start with the first one, Steve. I forget half the things I said. I forget right. half the things <laughs> I said. The first <laughs> quote. Oh, I know I who said oh, yeah. <laughs> Five Guys is spectacular. I mean, and the word that. spectacular makes me think Adam. No, okay. it's not me. But, uh, I, but, but I was going to say, but your, oh. food, your food takes are usually pretty good. So Thank I would you. say that Five Guys is not that. So... Good analysis right there. Uh, I'm going to go with Jason. Great answer. Yeah, I think I'm gonna that's go with, correct. I'm going to go with Jason. Good answer. conversation, he was not – well, I may be <coughs> talking about food. We took it as he just says he loves five guys. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah, that was we me. like and to spin was, the words around. The answer, Hayden, is now one for one. That was yep. Jason Lloyd. That was yeah. me. <laughs> I don't remember what the actual context <laughs> Oh, that picture. I'll never – Yeah. That's a nice jacket. Bust your balls about that all the time. That, 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 that is, is a great jacket. <laughs> it is a great That's a ja- jacket, great jacket. But it did not photograph well <laughs> that day at all. And the shirt was wrinkled. Like, it was, it was oh a bad my look. God. I don't that think was, it's that bad. It, it looks was, fine. It's a bad look. It's, all right, quote go ahead, two. Mike. Hayden, who said this? Quote, I've never seen a man gyrate like that. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Well, we went from five guys to men gyrating. Uh, <laughs> These are all completely out of context yeah. and you have nothing to do with anything you'll recognize. There's going to be a very common theme. Yes, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that, that right now. I'm seeing right uh, I'm going to go with gyrate. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Adam. That is incorrect. Do you guys remember who actually said this? I think it was G. Bush. Jay, right? I think it was, it was not G. Bush. It was oh. Jay. Bull sneezed one day. 
And I said, oh. I've never seen a woman gyrate like that. <laughs> you were, Mikey, you were my second guest, but that's, yeah. I, I was, remember it had to do with me, I but I couldn't remember who said it. I was directly at you as you sneezed, and yeah. a little <laughs> jiggle happened. <laughs> and I said, I'm a gyrate. jiggler. All right, next up, Steve, let's take the next one. Mm. Quote, Jameis has a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to go at him again. <laughs> that is correct. I'm going to go at him again. That it was me. It had to have <laughs> Jameis. And I was saying that in a complimentary Why way, believe it or not. I got a fat ass, too. Why did he just know that it was you? <laughs> like, My point was he's got a good, like, stable lower body. Stop it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> he's got a fat ass. Just stop it. I'm not it's sure you need it's the on fact that, that you doubled down on your statement. Like, Is it true? No, I don't know. Oh, oh it's, true. It's, it's, it's true. true. it's true. I have it's no idea. It's, I have no idea. It's true. Come on. I have no it's, idea. I've never looked at that. I'm bad. You've never seen him play a football game, then. We're still working It's out there. It is out there. Thank you, Hayden. I he is a man who's comfortable with himself. I agree, I agree with Two that. men who are not comfortable with I feel with pretty good that we're going to get Jameis in the show. Go I, feel, cool. I feel pretty good about that. You're going to get Jameis in here? I don't know if it'll be in studio. we got to get him in studio. I have, oh, I have it on got pretty to. good faith. We will get Jameis on the show. you got to play that quote. Show him that quote. Yeah. Before the start of the season. All right, next one. Quote, I always appreciated those high-priced hookers. <laughs> that sounds like Jason. <laughs> wow! That sounds like Jason. <laughs> No! That, that sounds like Jason. No, I don't think so. I can't remember who that, that was. Adam. It, it does sound like either, either me or Jason. Me. That's that was me. you? That's me. Oh, it was it you. Was That's because, right. Because I was talking about, you know, in football, when you do cover three, your linebackers is the hook. Uh, so when yeah, I was yeah. playing, I when I was playing in Seattle, we called them high price hookers. hookers when they made plays on the ball. Okay, so I was right. If it was about hookers, it would have been Jason. <laughs> <laughs> or that honestly would have been Yes. Uh, but that was perfect because Tyvis is the last person you would have thought. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a football terminology. Football terminology. I, know I get that. it. I get it. Don't know that if they don't play football. All right, I like yeah. it. I like it. Go ahead, Mike. Jason Enbull, all fans of high price hooking. Absolutely. Who wouldn't be? You want to take it. All right, next quote. You get what you pay for. Quote, you got to be able to stroke that thing. Oh. <laughs> God. I don't even have a clue, and I don't even oh want to know. Oh, my that. God. I know you ain't going to get that one. That's hilarious. Say, but do you remember who said this? Yeah, I do. Jason I'm guessing Ball, it's somebody remember? that's not on this panel. I don't remember. I'm going to say I'm gonna, Jay I'm gonna say golf, but I don't. No, it, it, I'm it gonna was say in Bush. the video nope. I sent all you guys. Uh-uh. I feel like that was Brad. It was Brad. <laughs> was that Brad? <laughs> it was Brad. Oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> what is he talking about? Bad shot, right? Well, Isaac Okoro <laughs> and his developing <laughs> 3 points. Oh, gosh. You've that thing. That's good. That's that's. Oh, that's oh, that, that is, is bad. Oh that's God. bad. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, this is a great game, Mike. Yeah, this is Thank like you. the best game ever. <laughs> All right, go uh, next. Next up, quote: I'd like to strip him. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who said that. Oh heck. my God, I'd like to strip him. I know the con. I do remember the context. This has got to be a football so like football. After the guess, I'll tell you something. The I would hope. Yeah. I'd like to strip him. <laughs> Who's he talking about? <laughs> nah, okay. If I tell you who he's talking about, you'll get the answer. So I'll get the I'll answer. Refrain from the context till after. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Tyvis. Nah, I would never say. I'm gonna have to say. <laughs> I, I'm, I have no clue. Who said I'm just because a I'm football term. G Bush. Only yeah. 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 it's gotta be yeah, G. G. Bush. Had a G Bush. I would yeah, never yeah, say yeah. this. Yeah. It is G Garrett. Bush. Okay. G Bush was talking about Mike Evans. And how if you stripped him down to the bare stats and you took away the name, his resume would rank up with the all-time great first 10-year resume. <laughs> but in saying that, he said, I'd like to strip him. Pause. Didn't he play Didn't he play like defensive line? Did Jim Garrett play like defensive yeah. line or so? So I, I was thinking maybe like strip him like on the football field, mm. but I guess not. Okay. Yeah. My no, that, that's why I guess Tyler. G played D-line. G played, G played D-line at Ohio University. Yep. So there was mm. another one. Okay. All right. All right. Last one. And I oh quote, my God. I ate it. Oh, I my it. God. I oh know my who God. said that. I know exactly who said that. I don't remember this. I, he, he bumped his head for sure. <laughs> I, I, have no, I don't have any clue. I ate it and I swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> Bull, do you remember this one? I do. I do. J- I is this I Jay? Know. Because Jay is not. Jay hasn't been mentioned. That's exactly who it is. It is Jay. It is Jay. Tyvis. 
you want to tell the context? I don't remember the I don't context remember this at all. I just remember him. Yeah, hey, it was my birthday. He said it on my <laughs> birthday. That. that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Was it after a, a loss or something? No, February no, we had Adam Richmond on from Man vs. Food. Oh. oh. Yeah. And he was talking about seafood and why he doesn't like seafood. And he said he tried, I forget what seafood it was, but yeah. he was like, I ate it, I swallowed it, didn't like it. <laughs> so if you take yeah. the other part out. Adam Richmond was, was on, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We had Adam Richmond. That was, was awesome. It was guest. a lot of fun. Yeah. You got to bring like Joey Chestnut on or something. He's been in Cleveland a lot. Yeah. Why? Well, he was at the pierogi eating contest. Mm-hmm. At yeah. The Cavs game. And I was mad. By the way, the guys he went up against. No, 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 no. That was a different guy. Slappies. I was at, no, I'm, I'm mistaking. When I was at a, I was at a Monsters game like a month ago and they did, and he wasn't there, but they did a pierogi eating contest from just fans. Yeah. And the guy who won ate like four pierogies. I was like. That's Why did they not get me? I would have killed those yeah, guys. That's embarrassing. I could eat like a, it was in thirty seconds, so you didn't have a lot of time. Oh, but I could still. eat ten pierogies in thirty seconds. No, nah, maybe it. not. Let's do it. That's that's what I know. named that tune. That's a lot of pierogies. <laughs> I, challenge pierogi eating contest? I challenge you to a pierogi eating contest. Mike, can we work something out? Can we get a pierogi eating contest? I mean, Earl, Earl, oh, Earl, take the mic. Say that again. I smash all in a pierogi eating contest. Oh, Any Earl. type of food eating contest, man, I want <coughs> all the smoke. Now, I just look like this. Earl, I pack away more food than anybody that worked for the Ultimate Cleveland <laughs> Sports Show. Earl, you talking the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. I would come in dead last because I can't eat like that. Now, yeah. by the way, <laughs> yeah, with like professional that. eating, what we see all the time, the hot dog contest, it's always the skinny guys that win. The fat guys never win. Yeah. But... In this circuit, we, none of us are professional eaters. That's true. So in, in non-professional yourself, you know eating, the fat guys win. I, I can't eat like that. So I, I, you know, <laughs> and I'm on a diet right now, but I would take a, a one-meal break away Just from my 23-pound weight loss. To show him up. To show Earl <laughs> that I'm going to kick his ass in pierogies. I got one super chat that I want to ask Hayden a few questions to wrap up. Our only super chat today comes from DBDog21, who says, people never bring up the fact that Deshaun said what impressed him the most was that Stefanski said he didn't like his play action and said we'll fix that. So that is our super chat for the day. Hayden, as a performer and sports reporter, analyst, combination, digital guru, when you look at great halftime shows, whether it's the Cavs, whether it's the Super Bowl, what kind of entertainment do you get excited for on those stages? I mean, all of it. Red Panda. I mean, Red Panda is awesome. That, like that, she's awesome. Okay. Like Stuff like that. Um, you, you do get kind of used to it. Like, I've seen the chair guy. You know the guy who goes up and, like, does yeah, all the right. chairs? I've seen him a million times. What? You ever seen that? Uh-uh. There's a guy that, you like, stacks... You Yeah, he, like, stacks chairs and he, like, he goes all the way up Twitter. and, like, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Slavic. Slavic. Slav, Slav. Slav, yeah, something like that. I've never heard of him. He packs his chairs into his van and drives all over the country to do yeah. his halftime shows and... Is it on, you say it's I've seen the Simon Says guy 8,000 times. He's good. Times. He's good. I yeah, like him. Yeah. Who? I think so, they need to bring him to Cleveland more. He's only yeah. been here like once or twice. I like, like Says. and I love during like the, the finals runs you had like Biz Marquis coming in here for yeah. halftime and like, was it, not Boys to Men. Um, I don't know. There's some pretty cool Yeah, groups. they do have some old acts yeah. to bring back. I think, I think, I think Quick Change is out of the game. I think Did they got divorced or something. Or oh, right? really? Did quick Change is, I'm trying to have a Quick Change conversation. You, uh, ain't, the, you the, ain't seen a halftime show. Do you see Quick Change? I don't even know who Quick I don't Change is. The ever best heard one of out there. The pierogi eating Just contest, stuff like that's pretty cool. Quick like change. bringing yeah. out Joey Chestnut. I mean, that's that's sweet. I need to get out. So, man. yeah, I mean, I, I I love it all. I think it's fun. Um, whether hey, it's a what's musical. your favorite concert you've ever been to? Oh, it's Buble, man. Come on. Oh, that's, that's your my guy. That's my guy. That's his yeah. guy. I saw the clip. Yeah. I saw the clip. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Buble called him out from the stage. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's it. Did you get a chance to meet Michael Stanley before he passed away, by the way? Uh, no, I go didn't. Again. I didn't. That's my mom was a, so yeah. my mom grew up here and she was she was kind of a groupie. She yeah. loved him. So unfortunately did not. Uh, Nor Eric Carmen. What is he a magician? Also a Cleveland Eric Carmen, guy. Eric Carmen the singer from Cleveland? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, he just passed too. He's a Cleveland guy too. What was his big song? Um I like that song it's, back It's in the, the one day. that Celine Dion sings. Um, it was an 80s song, right? Was All by myself. Yeah, like all by myself. Yeah, that's a good yeah. song. <coughs> yeah. Are you going to see Billy Joel and Rod Stewart? I'm going to. Yeah, I I'm am going too. to. I that. just bought my tickets. Yeah, Billy Joel's awesome, man. He's is that that's a first energy? It is. Yes. Yeah. And then there's one here at uh, Rock or at Progressive. Um, somebody biggest playing. Who's playing at the Progressive? The summer. Mike? 
Hayden Grove's playing at Progressive. Yeah, I'm That's not too big. Progressive. Where I'm are playing, you playing at the Donkey Derby Rob next Stewart. week. Rob Stewart. <laughs> what is the Donkey Derby? It's the Lake County Captains. They invited me to sing the National Anthem, and there's like a donkey, like a the horse donkey derby, where you ride on the donkey. I don't know. <laughs> Well, so have, it's you, guys like, ever, have it's, you guys ever heard of donkey it's, basketball? It's the slapdick capital of the United States on Tuesday, oh, oh, next dang. Tuesday. Really? Yeah, it's <laughs> me, Rick, Rickonia, Will Burge, some others. Nick It'll be funny. Yeah, sure. yeah. And when, when are you, when's the next <coughs> time people can go to see you? Uh, tonight, I'm at um, Valenti's in, um, Bruns, or in uh, North Royalton. And then yeah. Friday, I am at uh, Triv's, Mike Trevisano's place. And then Saturday, I am at uh, Brothers Lounge. So yeah, there you go. all over the place. Yeah. Go see him. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having appreciate me. It. I appreciate hey. you. What are we doing in overtime, Mike? We're talking to Wemby. Wemby on overtime. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. This is